man, thanks for coming on. Yeah, no problem. Thanks yeah. for having me. You you brought me some cool stuff. I did. So we've uh, we've started a retail division at Hacksmith, and the goal eventually is to invent something really cool. But in the meantime, we're uh, just experimenting with um, some really cool products. So that is a mini saber. It's a lighter sized propane torch. Oh my goodness, a mini saber. Yeah. I'm not, not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fire it up. To, is that what your finger is? <laughs> I just remembered I didn't put butane in it, so unfortunately we can't fire okay, it up. Good, but good. it literally makes like a five, six inch flame. Oh man, thank you. Yeah. And that's we're actually, awesome. we're in the process of making a new one that's full metal. Yeah. And it looks identical to our proto lightsaber. So it's like a collectible. Okay. Um, gold colored, like, yeah. That should be it's a got some good summer. weight to it. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. And then... You were showing me just before the show here this pocket book. Yeah, pocket ref. This book's been around, um, I think, since the 90s or 80s. The uh, the guy who compiled it literally has like three or four doctorates. And it's okay. just like this collection of absolutely everything. I call it the engineer's Bible. That's awesome. Um, like I, I earmarked a page for you. There's literally a chart for uh, skid marks versus speed. So if you see the skid marks on a road, you could measure them and figure out how fast that car was going. Like, That's great. There's random ass info in this. That's everywhere. like uh, my cousin Vinny shit there. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. like you can literally just open it up and be like, oh, that's really interesting. And then like it's got all the constants, unit conversions, you name it, it's in there. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's, this is like the best coffee table book ever. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Wire size versus voltage drop. Like this is insane. Yeah. That's cool. Do you ever actually reference it? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't recently. You've got the, inter- we're, you've we're, got the internet now. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the nice thing is the problem with the internet is like, yes, you can find everything on the internet. Mm-hmm. But making sure that the thing you found on the internet is actually true. Mm. Now you have to like double check, cross reference, yada, yada. And like we grew up with the internet. So yeah. we know how it works. But like there's still like kids these days who are just like, they don't realize you can find anything. Yep. But the thing is you... You still need to like know a bit about problem solving and researching to be able to find the right thing. So this thing is just awesome to have everything like you can throw it in your toolbox, pre vetted coffee table. Yeah, like it still warns you. It's just like all information is provided at a like <laughs> sure yeah, yeah. W- whatever. But um, yeah, super handy little book. We wanna we wanna use it in a video sometime where we uh, specifically like figure out like a whole bunch of stuff that we can actually use from the book. Oh. And then it's just like, we're working on this project and it's like, oh, but how do we do that? And we're like, look up. Oh, <laughs> uh, good plug for your book sales. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the book sales that you didn't have to write. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. I saw, I was cruising your Instagram before you showed up. I saw you guys were, what are you guys doing with go-karts on dirt? Like, I want in. <laughs> so, uh, that's actually on a new property. We just got a 18 acres by the 401 in okay. Cambridge. And um, I've... Now that I have a property, I've started collecting things. Mm. Um, we had that go-kart for a few years, but I just got a quad from my neighbor. I bought three more mini quads for the team. We're going to get some pit bikes. We're going to make some trails. Yes. There's, uh, yes. It's, it's literally like a recreational property in the city, okay. which is fantastic for what we're doing. And the cool thing is we were able to get it at a, a really good deal because out of the 18 acres, about like, I think 10 or 12 or like Grand River Conservation Area. Mm. So you can't develop on it. Yep. But that doesn't matter for us when we're filming videos. We got forest, we got ponds, we got hills, we got like rocks, we got like almost like a little gravel pit, like That's you name cool. it, we got the backdrop. So super excited. We're hoping to move in um, later this summer. Oh, is there is there a building on it? There is actually. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah there's a 15,000 square foot building Perfect. on it. Perfect. I've got plans in place. Uh, so it's going through site planning right now at Cambridge, but... Um, we're putting a 30,000 square foot expansion off the back, including Kitchener Waterloo's only soundstage. Oh. Yeah. Soundstage? Yeah, like What's a Hollywood that? soundstage. Oh, okay. So, uh, a big warehouse, no pillars, no beams. Yep. Like just open space, 50 foot ceilings. Cool. Whatever you want to shoot in there, whatever you want to do in there, you right. can. And the neat thing is it's right along the highway, so it's just like it's going to become a landmark for the city, which I'm super excited for. Oh, man, that's awesome. Yeah. Congrats. Are you going to rent that out at all, or is it just for your own stuff? It's mostly just for my own stuff, but who knows once we have it. Um, mm-hmm. Like I was mentioning before, I want to do like a Batman garage with those LED lights and whatnot, yeah. and it's just like uh, the actual garage where that was shot, they rented out to music videos for like 10 grand a day. Like Really? Oh, yeah. Like once you have it, you're yeah. kind of sad. It's, it's pretty expensive to build all the lights, all the controls and everything, yeah. but... 
it's just so cool. Oh man, that's great. Yeah. So, I mean, if anyone who doesn't know who you are, they've been living <laughs> under a rock, but can you explain to me, um, you know, I guess quickly what, what you do or what you, how you'd classify your business <laughs> if you can. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, essentially we're a YouTube channel. Sure. Um, an entertainment company. Okay. But, uh, the funny thing with being a YouTube channel and an entertainment company, technically I'm an advertising company because uh, that's, that's where all right. of our money comes from. Google AdSense and sponsors. So if you actually had to classify it, it's like, no, we're an advertisement company. And it's just like, what? Yeah. Um, but yeah, on our YouTube channel, Hacksmith Industries, we uh, take fictional ideas from comics, movies, and video games and try and make it real. Mm -hmm. So the neat thing is, especially with the technology advancing as it has over the past few decades, um, lots of stuff that was in sci-fi movies and video games and comics is actually possible to make. Maybe not exactly the way like sure. whoever dreamed it up did, but um, we're getting really close. And... Um, I started doing this full time almost six years ago now, okay. and it turned out the internet really liked it, and we're still one of the pretty much only channels kind of doing what we we do on this scale. And um, it's neat because a lot of these prototypes that we make, yeah, the technology is possible, but there's no commercial viability. Sure. So short of just being an eccentric billionaire like Batman or something, who's going to bother taking the time to make this stuff? Right. But luckily, I found this niche on YouTube where it's just like, I can justify spending tens of thousands of dollars building something really cool just for the sake of the video. Right. And then I have the cool thing afterwards. And it's just not, it's not like I'm ever going to sell it to someone unless there's like, I don't know. Could you sell it to someone? Like legally? Yeah, I don't see why not. Okay. It's just we haven't, we haven't found any eccentric billionaires who are like, right. make me that thing. And I'm surprised. I'm like, yeah, you know, like... Because you, you, you guys build like give the give the viewers some examples of like some of the stuff you'd build. Uh, lightsabers, obviously, one of our yeah. one of our biggest. We've been uh, developing a whole bunch of different lightsabers over the past five or six years now. Okay, and we're really honing in on a design that works, and um, we're working on the next one that's not out yet. Okay, it's gonna be amazing. Um, I mo I might pull an Elon Musk at some point and sell a not a lightsaber. Ah, same good. like minimalist packaging and yeah, whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Only do a very limited run, but I think that'd be really cool. That's so the, the ultimate goal is making one that it's all inside the hilt. Okay, like not a proto saber, no cord going anywhere. Okay, just right in the hilt, and um, it's definitely doable. Yep, it's just some of the tech isn't quite there yet, so we're having to do some of the stuff ourselves, which is it takes some time, expensive you know? and time. Yeah. Um, yeah, but we've done, uh, let's see, lots of, like, Iron Man projects, uh, Captain America Shield. That was our first, like, big viral video that really, like, jump-started the channel. Okay. I made an electromagnetic bracer so I could actually attract the shield from short distances like he did in the movie Age of oh, Ultron. Oh, cool. And that video really popped off. It took our channel from 100,000 subscribers to half a million in one month. Wow. And that was cool because I had quit my job, job like, six months beforehand, and I had about six months of savings to like see if this worked before I'd have to crawl back to a normal boring engineering job. So you <laughs> quit your job. So hang on, let me go let me go back. I quit before the business was at all viable. Did you know how much you could make on YouTube when you quit your job? Not really, to be honest. Really? No. Um, like when I quit my job, we had or I had uh, 70,000 subscribers. Okay. And so it's a good size channel. A decent size, yeah. yeah. Um, and I feel like now that like sponsorships are a big thing and whatnot, mm. like it is possible to run a channel with even less subscribers and make a living. Sure. But back then it was just like, it was, it was crazy. Like all my coworkers were like, you're quitting your job. Like, yeah. <laughs> like your videos are cool, but like, <laughs> what are you, what are you going to do? Um, so yeah, like I should really look this up cause it'd be a, a good number to have, but I feel like I was making like $10 a day in AdSense. Okay. So obviously not enough to make a living or anything. So I, you really I, I literally went like I, this and just quit your job. Like you didn't, it wasn't analytical. It wasn't. Uh, it, it was at first. Okay. So I actually asked my employer if I could work part time because mm. I was burning the candle at both ends. I'm like, I need to put a bit more time into YouTube. Maybe sure. I could work part time. And it was funny because I was working for an engineering company. Okay. Um, my manager said it was okay. The director of engineering said it was okay. The senior director of engineering was like, yeah, we don't want to lose Hobson. Mm. Hit the VP of engineering and the human resources department, and they're like, well, we can't make an exception. Then other people are going to want to work part-time or whatever. So literally over that weekend, I came back Monday, handed in my resignation letter, and didn't look back since. Wow. And I'm actually like, I'm, I'm so grateful that they didn't mm. do yeah. what I asked. Yeah. Because I would have, 
it probably just would have delayed it more yep. and maybe even burned me out more because doing both and you would have yeah there. yeah i would have <laughs> taken away from both yeah but um yeah i withdrew my rrsp had like maybe 15 grand what, in the what, bank account and i was like <laughs> <laughs> what did I, you i planned i was just okay. like okay january 1st rolls around gonna withdraw that 15 grand since i'm not gonna make any money next year yep and um yeah <laughs> okay so you you is <laughs> sat yourself down and said, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to take a giant step back, you know, financially for a and year. I had, I had literally just bought a house. Oh so my I just goodness. had a mortgage in tow. Okay. Now that being said, property was a lot cheaper back then. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been a bit crazier today, like getting a million dollar mortgage and being like, I'm going to quit my job. Yeah. And I feel like the bank would have been like, you're what? <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> Did you make money that first year? Uh, yeah. So basically once we, uh, once we had that video pop off, uh, Captain America shield, um, we made more money off AdSense than we'd ever, again, I don't remember the exact number, but it was like th Ball, thousands, thousands of dollars. Okay. Maybe even like we met, might have cracked 10,000 or something. From that one video. From that one okay. video. And the neat thing was because we had been producing what I think was pretty good content mm -hmm. at the time, that one video really like exploded uh, the whole channel because people were like, yeah. man, this is awesome. Right. What else has he done? Right. And um, when that video went up, like all the other videos started getting views and we started getting those subscribers and whatnot. Right. And once we hit half a million subscribers, suddenly the sponsorship deals started coming in. And it's just a company like I, I think our very first sponsorship, it was literally for a Q&A video about the Captain America Shield like a month after it came out. And the company's like, here's $12,000. All you have to do is uh, advertise this, this thing okay. for 30 seconds or, or whatever. And we're just like... Really? Deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it was, it was always funny in the beginning because, like, obviously, when you start out, you have no idea what you're worth or, right. or whatever. And um, sometimes brands will be like, what do you charge? Mm. And you're like, uh, this? <laughs> right. And you're like, I don't know if that's high or low. And then sometimes it's funny because when they say, like, yes right away, you're like, shit. Yeah. Should I have asked for twice as much? <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, ever since then, we started doing... A few sponsorships a month. We we're doing a, a video a week okay. and whatnot, and then I'd say within probably within a year, we were up to doing every single video was sponsored, one video a week. So, did you have sponsors? Did you have companies that would sign on for like? No, a, it was just one off. Typically, yeah. Wow. Over over my entire YouTube career, like we try and pitch that because YouTube is a very fit, like one video can go viral and one video doesn't. Right. So but to if be you sponsor fair, a, bunch, yeah. a bunch in a row, you've got a much better chance at a high ROI. Yeah. And I feel like part of the issue with that is the, the marketing ag agencies that have capitalized on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, no offense, but they're in it for them. Right. And they're uh, just like, oh, where can we fit this budget? Right. Over here, over here, okay. over here. And it's just like, yeah, but, you know, if you tried a bit harder with, like, this one creator mm -hmm. and, like, kept it going, mm -hmm. you could have a much bigger, like... Because that's the thing. Sometimes what happens is, like, obviously, it's usually based on, like, your average views and whatnot. So, like, right. say you're getting a million views a video, that's worth a certain amount of money. And then um, maybe the video goes viral or maybe it doesn't get a million views. Right. So if someone sponsors you and it doesn't get a million views, suddenly they're like, oh, I'm yeah. never sponsoring you again. And right. it's just like... <laughs> yeah, but the video next week just got 5 million views. You just missed out on that. Like, exactly. And it's just like the system's a little broken, which is kind of frustrating. So who is it that's that's approaching you? Is it it's advertising agencies? It's typically agencies, okay. yeah. Um, we're pretty much past the, uh, the day and age of uh, MCNs, multi-channel networks, sure. which were just the scourge of the earth. We were actually with Defy Media in the beginning because I didn't know any better. Okay. And, um, when, Explain how when, that worked. <laughs> It's, it's bullshit, really. Like, so an MCN um, will take all your AdSense okay. and take a, a cut off the top, Okay. sometimes 5%, sometimes 20%, and they're supposed to help you get more sponsorship. Ideally, they're supposed to bring you more value than they're taking away from yep. you. And for people who don't know your AdSense is what YouTube pays you. Exactly. Yep. So it's bullshit because they're not doing anything to help you get those views. Right. They right, might, nothing. They get you a, a sponsorship deal, sure. Okay. Take your 20% cut from the sponsorship deal because you brought it to me. Exactly. But um, it's it was it was huge in the early days of YouTube. Mm. And um, as far as I know, not many exist anymore because YouTubers wised up and they're like, wow, this is 
this is stupid. They can do it themselves. Um, yeah. But like, for example, Defy Media, the one I was with for a while, like I think we were with them until 2017 or 2018, maybe like three years. Okay. They did make us some money. Like as, as a multi-channel network, they can kind of sell premium ads and sure. unused ad space mm -hmm. that YouTube doesn't let creators do themselves. I see. Which is also some bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, they they did actually make us some additional money on top of our AdSense. So it's like we saw what we made in YouTube, and they're like, "Oh, here's another check for twenty grand." And we're like, "Oh, sweet." Okay. Um, but off that, they would like take fifty percent or something. Oh my goodness. Um, but anyways, uh, I don't know if you heard about this, but Defy Media like went bankrupt and fucked over so many YouTubers. Oh, geez. Basically, any money still in the system because they were collecting the AdSense <sighs> for didn't, you. Yeah, it didn't get paid was out. Was gone. So there was a class action lawsuit. Were I you honestly, still with them at this time I or no? We, so we had actually like split up from them like a month before it happened. <laughs> oh my God. But we still had about 10 grand in the system that they owed us. Yep. And suddenly it was like, well, we're never getting that back again. And that was like, like some, some YouTubers uh, I think lost like six figures and whatnot. So Jeez. there was a class action lawsuit. I don't actually know what the result was. I never saw another yeah. penny back from them and whatnot. But yeah, MCNs now. Oh man, <laughs> no, it's pretty tough to collect when someone declares bankruptcy. Yeah. <laughs> oh geez. So you started your channel. So I look back on your channel, and your earliest videos were like 2012 or something. But it was like 2006. Actually. But it was like labeled 2006 or something. The upload there, date there was different. There is some really weird YouTube bug. Oh. So I was on the platform in 2006, okay. and a lot of the videos do say 2006. Right. But when you scroll um, to oldest first, yeah. For some reason, it says 2012 when that video is from 2006. Weird. Super weird. But yeah, like I I started on the platform April 20th. 2006. When, when did, when did YouTube? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When um, did YouTube come YouTube out? YouTube was created in 2005. Okay. But it wasn't actually made public until like the end of 2005 or the beginning of 2006. So you're like so the quite literally, first. I was I was in there like. I mean, we should look up PewDiePie, but yeah, he was around the same time. Wow. <laughs> like, and did you like? So back in, back then, because we're about the same age. There was two types of kids who were putting stuff on there. People who were making YouTube videos and people who were just like posting their skiing, skateboarding, snowboarding <laughs> videos, right? Uh, a bit of both. I, yeah. used, I used to be in par into parkour okay. and free running. So yeah. some of my first videos were like doing parkour and flips and whatnot. And it was funny. In 2006, I actually had a viral video oh. by accident. Of parkour? Backflip tutorial. Oh, which I'm, I'm, dude, I'm sure oh. my brother watched this video in 2006. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure, probably. So it was funny because um, I made some cool videos and uh, somehow I got a sponsor back then. There was this t-shirt company from New Jersey called Evolution Stops Here. Okay. And he liked my videos or something. He's like, can I send you some free shirts? Yep. And 16 year old me was like, hell yeah. Free shirts. Hell yeah. yeah. Um, so I wore those in my videos and whatnot. And um Basically, as soon as we got the shirts, we're like, shit, we need to make a video. Mm. What do we do? And one of my buddies wanted to learn how to backflip. And uh, I was actually a gymnastics coach at the time. I'm like, okay, screw it. Let's, uh, let's film teaching him how to backflip. And we made a 14-minute video, which at the time, uh, videos used to be limited to 10 minutes. But for some reason, I was allowed, like, because oh. I was on long enough or something. But we made a 14-minute backflip tutorial. And it ended up becoming the number one backflip tutorial on the internet for a good five years. So like how many views did that do? Um, back then it was a few million. Yeah. And now it's still only got like, I don't know, three or four million. So it's like nothing compared to today's standard. Sure. But back then, um, I don't know if you remember YouTube in 2006. It, the UI was not that, that nice. No. But literally next to your video, it used to say number one in sports and this number seven in yes, entertainment. Yes, Do you remember yes, that? I yeah. remember that, yeah. So I think I still have some screenshots from when that video popped off. I'm just like, what the hell? And uh, it's kind of funny because even when that happened, I still never thought about being able to do YouTube as a job or anything because it was mm. just unheard of. But I still did kind of experience the, the internet fame that I have now. Right. I remember going to a parkour meet in Toronto okay. and people recognized me there. They're like, you're the backflip guy. I was just like... <laughs> Wow. Damn, like 16 year old. Like yeah. I was, I was quite the introvert back in the day. I, sure. I still am really. It's just like YouTube, you, you get to show whatever side. Right. You can <laughs> edit it. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, even back then I was just like, you're the backflip guy. I was like, damn. And the, the cool thing is I've gotten a few comments over the past few years where today's subscribers realize 
they saw that video right. where they learned how to do a backflip. <laughs> and I changed my channel. It used to be called Master James. Okay. It's pretty cringy. <laughs> um, so people didn't really re remember that. Or, and then they scroll back and they're like, wait a sec. They're, they wait. were... <laughs> you taught me how to do a backflip and now you're like making robots and shit. Like what? And it's just like, it's, it's crazy to think that like, like videos have such a wide reaching impact. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely insane. And probably one of the most like satisfying parts about running a YouTube channel. Cause one of the other big things that we, we noticed, which was honestly a complete accident. I started this channel because I liked making cool shit. Okay. And that's it. Yep. What I didn't realize was, Showing how to make cool shit is very inspiring to people wanting to go into engineering or learning how oh, to make yeah. stuff. Yeah. So the number of comments we've gotten where people are like, I didn't know engineering could be cool. Right. So like, I'm, I'm doing what Bill Nye, the science guy, did for like science back in the 90s. 100%. You know? And um, getting comments about people like, I'm going to get an engineering degree because of your videos. And now, because I've been doing it for so long, like six years really full time, I've gotten comments being like, I just graduated engineering school because of those videos you made back then. It's just like, whoa. That's got to feel so good. Yeah, it's awesome. Like, it, it's it's weird because with YouTube, it's just like, like, even like, YouTube aside, like, I want to make a difference in this world. And I want to mm. do something. I want to leave a mark. And the reality is I probably already have, but it doesn't feel like it because it's not like, it's not like inventing something new or like, sure. yeah. you know, <laughs> but you must get it where people would stop you on the street or even just in today's oh, yeah, day and age, like DM had, you or whatever. And, and you know, we've, we've had some pretty funny, uh, occurrences. Um, <laughs> my, my license plate says Hacksmith. So it's just like, oh, I'm not hard to find. Oh yeah. Um, but the amount of cars that will like honk at me. Yeah. I'm like, wait, what did I do? And then they roll down the window. And like, love your videos, man. <laughs> just like, oh jeez, That's great. You got to <laughs> change that probably <laughs> <laughs> at some point. Yeah. yeah. Um, or there's another time I was sitting in the parking lot of KW Surplus, one of my favorite stores, just an army surplus store where we got lots of supplies. So I, I used to paintball back yeah. in the day and I'd go there like all the time. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, anyways, store. I, I bought something and then I sit in my car, I'm checking my phone and then someone like knocks on the glass. I'm just like, oh, <laughs> and it was a guy and his 12 year old daughter and they were both huge fans of the channel and they're just like, oh, just wanted to great. say hi, blah, blah. And what I do is I actually, I keep like a, a briefcase of merch in my trunk. So whenever I like meet fans, I'll nice. like hand out like a hat or, or, or wallet or something like that. And it's just, it's awesome. Um, it's been rough with the pandemic cause like I forgot how much like I missed that like actual fan mm. interaction. Cause like as much as like, it, it just becomes numbers on YouTube. Yeah, hundred percent. And the and the goalpost keeps moving. So it's just like million views. No, I want five million views. It's yeah. Just like, can you imagine seeing a million people watch your video? Like playing the. I used to have this one. Uh, <laughs> I had this one fan who would email me these like essays. Okay. Every time I broke a new subscriber record, and uh, he actually identified a lot of like up and coming YouTubers, okay. or maybe he just messages like a ton of YouTubers, yep. but like he would give me these metrics about like, this is more people than uh, we're in Rome or like, like just wow. trying to put it in perspective, like the largest gathering of humans on earth was like this at this event or whatever. And you have five times that or like, wow. or like Super Bowl, like a huge one that blows my mind is like Super Bowl views. Yeah. Like it's only like a hundred million. Right. Views. Yeah. Um, I don't get a hundred million view videos, but like Mr. Beast does and whatnot. Sure. Just like when you've certainly when you had over a hundred million views. Yeah, yeah. We got like 1.3 billion, I think, yeah. Yeah. which is, just, it's insane. Um, and yeah, like another one, I remember Casey Neistat in some podcast mentioned like the re the day he realized YouTube was the next big thing was when, uh, when he started getting like hundreds, of hundreds of thousands of views. Right. Because, uh, apparently like, okay tv shows in the states they get a hundred thousand views an episode right that's think, always think something about that, how yeah. much money goes into making a tv show compared to a video and now we're pumping out these videos that are getting millions and millions of views and you're just like an entire production company like 
Oh, yeah. And it's it's crazy. And um, the nice thing for YouTubers is like advertisers are finally starting to friggin' realize that because like right. there's still so much money in like TV. And it's like who watches TV? No, it's just a you know slowly dying. Same dinosaur. with like billboards. Oh, I don't I understand I don't billboards. Get, I don't get it at all. <laughs> I think about that all the time. Yeah. I mean, no offense to the straight pipes <laughs> getting the uh, their million subscriber thing on the plate. That was pretty cool. Oh yeah, I, I, yeah, I yeah. probably do that right, too. Right. But it's just like it was more of a fun thing to do, not a oh people are actually gonna like. Buy my product or subscribe no, to me on no, YouTube. No. Yeah, like, they know better. Yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's hmm. crazy. So, do you do you make? Say you had to. Like, I look at your operation. How many guys do you have working for you? Uh, I think we have twenty right now, which is insane. Yeah, that's the same as you guys. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're a freaking <laughs> legendary motor car company. Like that's that's insane. <laughs> and now you've got a building, like your own building. You've got a serious amount of overhead. Oh, and yeah, that's and the scary I, part. And I look at what it what it must cost, like I have no, you know, what it must cost to build some of these things that you're building. The, the crazy thing is, like in the beginning, projects were the most expensive part. Right. Where we're like, shit, we need a thousand dollar part. Mm. Can we do this? Right. Should we do this? Yeah. <laughs> Should we spend this money on this thing? One of our, actually, good story about that. Um, <laughs> one of the most expensive things we bought for shits and giggles, essentially, was a jet engine. It was like $4,000. What? We use that. Where'd you buy that? It's the internet. Okay. You can buy anything on the internet. <laughs> They're used the for dark like, web? <laughs> no, no. Like literally like yeah, you can no, find no, them on know. eBay and whatnot. Yeah. But um, to us, it was like a huge amount of money. But then we ended up, fuck, we've used that uh, jet engine for like five or six videos. So huge It's, it's provided like a 10,000% return on investment or something awesome. over its lifetime. And like, we haven't even used it that much. Like it's got maybe like five hours on it, you know, <laughs> right. like it's a jet engine that will last for like 50 before it needs servicing. Right. But you can't, you can't, you can't service it. Can yeah. You, you guys, act, uh, we can actually, like, you actually have to send it back to the company yeah. to have it like, yeah. uh, reserviced and whatnot. So we've been meaning on, we've been meaning to buy a bigger one now. Cause yeah. we're just like, why not? You know? Huh? And so do you, first time. do you think like all that, all that said, do you think, uh, when you might know, Without if without advertisers at all, could you make money strictly off of YouTube? YouTube AdSense? Yes. Um, yes, but you would have to like, you'd have to change the game a little bit. Like, like you would you would have to change the way you're doing it. Yeah, like um, like you said, like my overhead's crazy. Like with that many people and doing engineering projects. Yeah. Like compare it to like a streamer mm -hmm. who has like a five thousand dollar nice setup in their bedroom well exactly and they play video games exactly. there is no overhead there you're yeah. you're you're set yeah but like we have like all the the engineering co like there's all the prototypes that we make that don't even make it into a video so there's right. lots of like sunk costs where we're trying something and um we're at the point now where it's just like we will buy the expensive part hoping it works mm. and it's still better to do that than to spend too much time 100%. trying to design it or engineer and whatnot. And that's a that's also been a really interesting thing to like teach the employees. It's just like Time is so valuable. I know it seems like that's an expensive part, but you spending a week trying to figure it out, <laughs> yeah. that's even more expensive. Yeah, exactly. Because it's it's never just like everyone knows what they get paid, right. but the reality is the overhead of the business is typically, like there's a, re there's a reason why like consulting engineers charge hundreds of, th hundreds of dollars an hour. Yep. It's not that they're making hundreds of dollars an hour, it's like, <laughs> that's like just the bare minimum for engineering. So when you think about it in that way and you've got these projects that take hundreds or thousands of hours to do, mm -hmm. that rolls up the, the oh, cost real insane. fast. It's insane, like to, <laughs> to call yourself simply a YouTube channel is like really selling yourself short. Like you guys are a, full like skunk work shop exactly. that's exactly what i'm going for so like with the new facility we're hoping to bring in even more tools so we can literally like just like what you guys do with cars you're yep. like a full service restoration you can do everything in house basically yeah um that's what i want to do for everything do you guys get any <laughs> r d money no okay <laughs> do you ever try um well actually i guess we kind of do so uh in canada there's something called shred yeah okay yeah so yeah we we get some shred money which is awesome and um we we might be getting some money from um, was it the CRTC the Canadian brought no. oh yeah 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 um, CRTC yeah so basically uh, the Canadian government will pay to help get Canadian content out there but um, it never really <laughs> evolved with the times mm -hmm. so it's very specifically like TV shows on Canadian TV channels and whatnot so even though I'm reaching far more Canadians 
than anyone on like a, a cable television channel. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, they haven't changed that. But um, another YouTuber I know, Linus Tech Tips, he, uh, he got selling started and basically got one of his alternate platforms listed as a Canadian distributor. Okay. So basically we can post our content on there and take advantage nice. of these, these tax credits. So yep. um, that hasn't started yet, but that'll be really freaking handy because between shred and that you can, you can cut your, uh, your, your overhead significantly from uh, what you're paying. Which yeah, would be exactly. Awesome. No, make exactly. more, make more money for the, uh, the projects and mm-hmm. whatnot. Cause it's always like, with every growth of this channel, it's always like, we want to do bigger and better and right. bigger and better. And um, the issue we're finding now is, um, <laughs> again, like the internet with its short attention spans and whatnot, you got to you gotta blow the internet out of the water in to, what's, get, in what's to get crazy views. Okay, yeah. You know? Yep. Um, like, in the beginning, I had fun just, like, throwing off a tripod and mm-hmm. problem solving and figuring out a project. And mm-hmm. it wasn't the most amazing project, but it was cool. It was, you could follow along this guy in his garage making this cool thing. Now we're in this kind of awkward stage where we're, like, trying to be, like, a real-life Stark Industries. Yep. But with that comes the expectations of something. Stark Industries. Exactly, yeah. And it's just, like, if we don't make something, like... We'll get comments being like, oh, man, I miss the old videos. This thing's, like, super easy to make. And it's like, no. Like, yeah. <laughs> the amount of effort that we put into this project. I know you guys don't necessarily see that, but, like, right. the stuff I was doing back then was child's play. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. come leaps and bounds. So we, we kind of pigeonholed ourselves a little bit of, like, trying to be the Stark industry. So now we have to, like, do really cool stuff. And the problem was... We grew the company like exponentially when we were growing exponentially. Like literally the first four years of YouTube for me, we doubled in size year over year. Wow. Employees, revenue, views, subscribers. Wow. Literally almost every metric, double, 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 double. Okay. And that's a bit dangerous for a new business owner because mm-hmm. you're just like, this will last forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And um, it slowed down after the pandemic, obviously. Um, but we had gotten to the size where we needed to make a video a week. We needed a sponsor mm. a week just to be able to cover our overhead and right. keep going. So we kind of got stuck on this YouTube treadmill where it's just like, well, we need to make weekly content. Yep. And um, regular content worked a lot better for YouTube like 10 years ago. Like weekly content. Yeah. Or just yeah. regular content. Like it used to be like, oh, this YouTuber's uploading every Wednesday. Every sure. Week. That's and how the, the algor- algorithm, and the algorithm rewarded preferred that. that. Yeah. 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 Um, but now the algorithm doesn't, doesn't care. It really? Just, no. It, oh, okay. it, it's all about um, like watch time and viewer retention and whatnot. Okay. Like I recently got to sit down with Mr. Beast and I learned a ton from him. It was freaking awesome oh that's awesome and um i feel bad for him because he's all like even worse than me like oh like, everyone's expecting his, hedon- so his hedonic tolerance yeah. is, is above so, everyone else yeah I, i'll give you examples like um he needed some lightsabers for video yeah um, gave me two weeks notice i didn't have two lightsabers we we whipped these lightsabers together we take him down to north carolina he's doing this like hundred thousand dollar scavenger hunt thing to like amazing race style video okay yeah um we use our lightsabers for part of the video. It's great, yada yada. Um, <laughs> lightsabers aren't even cool enough for Mr. Beast. I thought like maybe he'd like capitalize that in the thumbnail or something. No, <laughs> for his style of content. <laughs> and then what's worse, he hasn't posted the video. And he Wait, might, he hasn't posted it yet. And he might never post it. He, or he's it was p- a failure in his mind. Mm-hmm. Oh not, my not because of us. Like, no, no, our, no, our no, section no, was no, literally no, only yeah. like twenty seconds of the okay. video. But quite literally, because he's he's also kind of stuck on a treadmill, I guess, sure. where it has to be bigger and better. And he won't post something if he doesn't think like it's going to be a banger. He's really? like, why are you even, why are you even making a video if it's not a banger? Like literally, I guess, we, sat I get on, that. we sat on his $18,000 cloud coach, okay. which was comfy. He swore it wasn't because it cost $18,000. It was comfy, but like, I feel like you can get a comfy couch for less than 18 I feel grand. like you guys could make one for less yeah. than 18 anyway, grand. Anyway, <laughs> um, it, it was cool because I started telling him about my plans and the new property I bought. Mm. And uh, that's what really like piqued his attention. He's like, I've never met another YouTuber who's like building a campus. Right. So suddenly like he wanted to help. Like, cool. He was, he was just being friendly at first, just hanging out. And he's like, wait, you're, you're, you're doing something like cool. Yeah. 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 Um, so then he started scrolling for our YouTube videos mm. and I'm like, Oh, watch this one. And he's like, no. I'm like, why? And he's just like, you can't cherry pick your videos. I was like, 
you gotta every video should be good okay so then he just went through and he like picked some videos like oh not that one not that one not that. <laughs> and he <laughs> watches it and like um he was he was brutally honest with his feedback well he's he was, an animal like he knows yeah, what he's doing he was like um <laughs> do you hate views <laughs> do you he's like why are you doing that <laughs> um so it, it was he he did find a few videos that he liked okay um it made sense because they were the videos that got lots of views right and whether or not he even noticed that when he was like scrolling mm. and what he'd do is he's just like he'd watch one of our videos and like if the intro was too long out too drawn out like 10 seconds 15 seconds in he's like you lost me and he just closed the video and then he opened another one I was just like, and it was, it was funny because I had my uh, my lead videographer and yeah. editor with me too, and oh, he's just like good. sitting on the couch. He's just like, no, it was good that he was there because probably heard imagine him for in me, soul, I, imagine <laughs> for me coming back and being like, so Mr. B said uh, <laughs> all your stuff sucks. <laughs> it, it wasn't like, yeah, no, it was um, it was such like such a useful conversation, I and bet. like th- that was the big difference between me and him. Like, I did start out. I think he's been doing YouTube almost as long. Like mm-hmm. he's he's only twenty three. Crazy, great. Th- yeah. Or maybe he turned twenty four. Um, but I did have like a million subscribers before he did. Okay. Kind of thing. So yep. like I was big on YouTube before Mr. Beast became big on YouTube. Sure. And um, my growth was pretty like doubling year over year. That was that was huge. That's still like up oh, there yeah. for YouTube channels. But then Mr. Beast came in like a wrecking ball and just like now he's the gold standard that like no one else is gonna meet. Like right for who knows how long. Um, but the big difference between me and him was when he started getting success on YouTube, he was like, why? Mm-hmm. And he focused really hard on the video, mm-hmm. on viewer retention, mm-hmm. um, how to make it more engaging, all this kind of stuff. When I started growing on YouTube, I'm an engineer, I'm just like, I got more money. I'm going to make bigger projects. I'm going yeah. to make better projects. Right. And I thought that was, and it, that kind of worked for me. Like I still doubled the channel year over year, but I never really focused on like, but wait, how do I make a better video to get more views? Right. And that was a big thing I noticed as we grew. Cause it's just like, I think even when we had like two or 4 million subscribers, our average views sat around a million views a video. Hmm. And then we got to 10 million subscribers. We got the diamond play button and our average was still only a million views a video. And that's twofold. That's A, subscribers don't mean anything anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and B, okay, we're not making better videos. Right. Even though we have more subscribers and more money, we're not making better videos. Right. So it kind of like, it, it gave me a good perspective. Like, oh, I kind of kind of messed, messed up a little bit. So this year we've, we've changed our strategy because over the past two years, our views have kind of like, They've really plateaued and sometimes dipped. We've had a few videos that have only gotten a hundred, couple hundred thousand views, and that's Ooh, like a, that's like a gut punch. You're just like, what did I do? Like, should I delete it? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of thing. So our new strategy this year is trying to focus on like bigger, like banger videos. Basically, like Mr. B says, like okay. if you don't think it's going to be a banger, don't post it. Right. Um, I haven't. Th- thrown away any videos yet good, good. not that brave yeah um, but to put it in perspective for like mr beast's videos like the the video i was in the sma production cost was like half a million dollars or something and he's not and gonna now, post and it. he's not gonna post he might post it to one of his sub channels like he's got a mr beast 2 channel which has like 20 million subscribers it's got two videos on that channel um but he doesn't want to hurt his channel in the algorithm's eyes i see and it's it's crazy that we're like yeah, you're ultimately making good videos, but you're trying to appease the algorithm. The algorithm, the not, AI. Not necessarily yeah. your audience, but yep. the, the algorithm. So, uh, yeah, now we're only going to be posting when a video is ready. Yep. And we're starting with roughly like four to six weeks between videos. Okay. And not having a strict schedule versus before when it was like every week. And right. It was just like, it wasn't the video. It was what videos could we make, not what videos should we make. Mm. And the thing was, even those videos that I guess I feel weren't that good because they weren't getting good views, still took like four weeks of effort. It's like um, back then we were like literally juggling five or six projects at a time every day to be able to maintain, okay, in four weeks this video is coming out and then this video is coming out. And it was always like a rush to the finish line, like editing the night before the video comes out. And that's just stressful. 
So that was my biggest takeaway. Like I didn't know who Mr. Beast was until he was on Rogan. And okay. I just, I'm just yeah. not a YouTube guy. Yeah, like yeah. I don't, I don't subscribe to many channels. Like I'll watch YouTube. I'll watch everything on YouTube, but I would never follow YouTubers. And that was, it's funny you, you have this whole segment here on this. Cause that was my <laughs> biggest takeaway from his interview with Rogan is the idea is so important. Be yep. patient. Yep. The algorithm's not every week. Do it whenever. It's, it's, it's still it, mind blowing though. Like, the amount of people who don't know who Mr. Beast is, even though he's like the biggest YouTuber on the platform, it's a very specific people who use YouTube. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's crazy. So, um, and you'll notice that with most big YouTubers, um, they don't have a regular posting schedule. Right. The videos come out when they come out. Huh. And there's a reason for that. It's, they want it to be perfect. Right. And um, I can't speak on behalf of all big YouTubers, but like sometimes like, Maybe the video doesn't get, like, taken down completely, but they might, like, completely re-edit it or, like, right. redesign the story and whatnot, trying to capitalize on the best viewer attention and whatnot. So what are you going to change going forward? Basically, we're going to we're gonna be a bit more careful in the projects we pick. Okay. Um, that's, that's one of the really interesting things for our channel. Like, the IP is really a big part of what holds up our views. So, like, picking a popular thing that people are, like, Iron Man. Yes, yeah. Captain yeah. America. Yeah. Lightsabers. Right. You're, you're hitting a massive fan base, which gives you a, a good chance for, for getting lots of views. Is that what you attribute, attribute a lot of your success to? Oh, yeah. I think if, if the MCU didn't exist, I don't think I'd be half the channel I am today. Okay. Like, the amount of Marvel projects we do is, like, and now that Disney owns, like, <laughs> yeah, it's all traced back to Disney. Sure. You know, um, like, Star Wars now, too. Like, they, yeah. they own it all. So, um yeah, we're going to take a bit more time picking the, the content we want to do mm-hmm. and um, really, really working on the storytelling and the narrative and bringing, bringing the viewer through the entire experience. Okay. I do really miss the days when I could just like go in the garage, start working on something. Right. And it was, there was story there because you were following along my, uh, my journey of invention. Right. But the problem is that's not mainstream friendly. No, There's a huge yeah. portion of my audience who would probably love sure. for me to go back to that. Oh, yeah. But the way my business is set up right now, I can't afford to do that. Right. Um, and we've had, we, we've tried to bring in co-hosts mm-hmm. and whatnot to try and like take some of the pressure off me. And mm-hmm. it hasn't quite worked that well, which then puts it all back on me. And it's just like, it's, yep. it's very, uh, <laughs> it's a lot of work. Um, so I actually asked like Mr. Beast about that. And he's like, oh, well, you're doing it wrong. I was like, what? <laughs> and it's just like, yeah, like your hardcore fans know who these people are. But if you want your co-hosts to become you okay. or like close to you, yep. they should be in every single video with you. Right. Whereas we were like, kind of like, okay, Bogdan, you can do this video or Charles, you can do this video. Yeah. And I'd still pop in. Right. But if you just like jumped into that video and skipped ahead, you'd be like, who's this guy? Right. If you're not like, and because again, since our channel has to play with mainstream views, yep. we can't rely on the hardcore fans who actually know who like the name of everyone are. on the team is, right? you know? So the nice thing is now that we're doing like a video every month or so, I'm hoping stress levels go down a little bit. Yep. We're hoping views go up because if views don't go up, we're just going to be burning money until hopefully yeah. they do, or we realize we got to go back to weekly video. I don't want to think about that part. Um, hopefully everything will like continue to climb up. So you actually think by doing what three less videos a month, yeah, you're going to have more views. Is the goal? That's the goal. Okay, that's the only way it would work. Yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, so far so good. But our first video that we came out with really with that strategy was I, I gave Mr. Beast real lightsabers and it's got 10 million views. I'm like, okay, that's great. Yep. But it's because Mr. Beast is in the thumbnail. Like that's why, know? um, because then we, we ended up doing another Mr. Beast video because we, we, uh, <laughs> killed two birds with one stone. We made a Hulkbuster fist and we, uh, gave it to him in another video okay. and then we made a second video. That video only got 3 million views, which Smart. is still way better than some of our recent videos. So what you're saying is you need to go down to North Carolina and hang with Mr. No, Beast. No, <laughs> I, th- I think it's already like declining returns. Yeah. So it's just like, no, we got to actually like um, do some really cool stuff. And okay. we, we do have some big projects in the works. Yeah. Which um, that's the nice thing. Usually, almost always, our biggest projects have always gotten good views. Okay. Like it's something about um, 
seeing the work that goes into something or it, it truly being original, you know, and originality is, is key on YouTube. Yeah. So, um, so, you know, like you, you know, in your heart of hearts, what's going to work and what's not going to work when you see it. Sometimes. Yeah. Um, but because we're stuck doing a video a week, stuff slipped by and it's just sure. like every few months we're like, okay, this is going to be good. Yep. And then it was good. Yep. And then sometimes, sometimes you get it wrong. Okay. But, and then sometimes the weirdest videos pop off and you're like, what? Right. <laughs> so there is no, there is no knowing for sure mm -hmm. and whatnot. But, um, I'll give you an example of like our next big video we're working on. Um, <laughs> we're building a giant Thor's hammer. Okay. Like the size of a car. Okay. The handle's 13 feet tall. The size of a car. Literally the size of like a small minivan. How much does this thing weigh? Steel alone, it's about 4,000 pounds. Okay. Literally buying the steel. Who's going to wield this? <laughs> a crane. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, literally buying the steel, I think it's like 14 grand oh my of goodness. just steel, let alone like the welding time. The welding wire. I, I don't even... I. We, I should do this for the video. We should buy like a bunch of rolls of welding wire and just see, yeah. like, be able to put a number to it. It's just like, yeah, we put another 500 pounds of welding wire into this. Or you should, ridiculous. for sure. So anyways, the internet loves big things. Mm -hmm. So we're like, we can't go wrong. And um, <laughs> for some reason, like, if you look at my top videos, they fall into four categories. Okay. Lightsabers. Okay. Thor hammers. Captain America shields. And Iron Man. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Those are all the top performers. Sure. Um, so we're like, okay. And and the beauty with the giant Thor's hammer is it's just like, you've never seen that before. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the key for uh, YouTube thumbnails. It's just like, wait, is that real? Yeah. <clears throat> but the fun part of that, and the, the other big thing with videos that we're learning more and more, which is part of the reason why Mr. Beast is so successful, uh, same with Mark Rober, mm. is physical audience interaction. Okay. You're not isolated in your garage or your workshop. You're right. taking whatever you made out there and getting genuine yes. reaction. Like all of Mr. Beast's videos, yes. it's random strangers getting money or, or whatever. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Talking too much. Yeah. No, okay. That's that's something I never thought of. But now that you say that, it's, that's huge. That's that's the reason why like like reality TV and like mm. those gag shows and stuff works because you're like. Why do you think that is? I think it's because you can really put yourself there. Mm. Yeah. Whereas, and that's another issue for us, like inside of our fancy facility with all these tools, 12 year old Timmy isn't going to imagine that he could work there. Right. Necessarily. Right. Maybe no. he would, but like, <laughs> I compared, mean, certainly not me. Yeah. Yeah. But compared to like when I was just in my garage and it's just like, mm. oh, there's some rusty tools here. And like, you can imagine yourself doing that. So when we grew into a bigger business, we kind of lost that relatability. Mm. And came with the, the the issue of we need to do bigger and bigger and better. Right. So we got to try and bring back some of that and, like, get more of the fans involved and whatnot. Yep. So for the giant Thor hammer, obviously we're going to do some destruction. Yeah. We're going to rent a full-out crane, lift it up, and drop it on things. We're going to squish some cars. Yeah. We, uh, uh, this local uh, auto wrecker, um, they do – it's for some charity. Okay. So it's, like, cars for kids or, or whatever. Um, they're like, yeah, we'll provide you free cars anytime you want to do something with them as long as you, like, give us a little show. And we're like, sure. Perfect. Um, they gave us a 2002 red Cadillac in great condition. It's the one with the really shitty engine, like the V10. Like, okay. Uh, I forget what it's called. But um, <laughs> we put one of our uh, co-op co students on it, and he made it remote controlled for us. We didn't even film making it remote controlled, even though that's actually pretty cool. That's like making super a, cool, a full yeah. size remote control car. But I didn't care about that for the video. What I care about for the video is I want to drive that Cadillac into the side of the Thor hammer at like a hundred miles an hour. Nice. So yeah. we made a remote control car so we can do that. And that's what we're realizing more and more is just like, you don't have to show everything about how you did it. Yep. Because you're trying to go for the spectacle at the end of the day. Right. Which is the same thing that Mr. Beast does. It's just like, he spends so much money that you don't realize, like. Yeah. Sorry, I keep going back to Mr. Beast, but like. No, 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 I get it. Everyone I get it, thinks yeah. he like gives away so much money. But like a hundred. He spends it. He spends it. Like a hundred grand giveaway in a video. It's like, oh, wow. Like, that's so much money. It's just like, yeah, but the production cost was half a million on that video. Yeah. And you're just like, wait what <laughs> like, yeah exactly and it's like the small part of it and um 
Yeah. It's, yeah. Because it's, it's like, be, well, because you, 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 like your channel became successful because you were showing how things were done and how you built everything. Whereas he is using, like, it's so funny. He's using like your lightsaber and stuff and he doesn't care at all about how it was built or anything. Yep. He's just, it's a different audience. It's just a scene where he's got it and he's, you know, torching shit. So yeah. that, that makes an issue for us because it's like, well, we built the audience making it. Yep. So we want to keep that audience happy. Right. But we also want to be able to get these views. So it's right. it's this balancing act of like how much do we show and like right. before we lose people or like vice versa. So actually something we're looking into doing is um, for our members on YouTube, we're actually going to do extended cut videos. Okay. Because ba- basically we film everything regardless because we don't, right. you don't, we don't know necessarily what's be good know what we're yeah. going to use. So we'll do a rough cut of that. And mm-hmm. before we shrink it down to be uh, YouTube mainstream friendly, we make it a, a version available for the diehard fans who, who want to see that in-depth engineering process. Okay, good. Smart, yeah. smart. Yeah, because yeah. you, you, like, you definitely built your channel on those people. Yeah. Like, it's funny. I watched your, uh, your um, Wolverine claws, like the original one that you did. That's, that's another topic. Like, every, almost every one of my Wolverine claw videos has 10 million views. I'm just like, and looking back, like, they didn't get 10 million views right away. But, right. like very evergreen content totally and like yeah i've done metal claws electrified claws bone claws last year i did self-healing claws which were really cool what i used a uh, night null like memory alloy what is that um so it's actually used in the medical industry a lot okay um and basically when you temper this metal mm-hmm. it remembers its shape and you can actually okay. bend it out of shape yeah but if you apply heat to it and okay. it's not much it's like I think a 30 degree temperature differential, yep. it will try and retain, re- return to that shape. So it's actually used for like um, dental drills. Oh. So super flexible drills for drilling into your root cavity. Yep. Um, and they also make nitinol bone staples. Okay. So it's literally the staple that you, you install into the bone where you've got a crack and whatnot. And the heat of your body yep. makes the metal want to contract. So it's actually oh. literally that property of the metal that's holding the bone together. That's insane. Yeah. That is like, <laughs> that is magic if you brought that back in time. Like, oh, yeah. So it was a really cool video because it could beat beat stuff up with the Wolverine claws. And then if they got bent, yep. I just use the mini saber, heat it up, returns back to normal. That's and we're cool. actually... Um, we're we're doing a collab with a company that that makes the metal and like makes medical devices. Yeah. And uh, the plan is to do a Captain America shield out of it. Okay. And then what I want to do is uh, build heaters into it. So literally, oh. y- the shield get all bent up, yep. dented and whatnot. And you just press this button and something. Boop. And the neat thing is, night is an alloy. Yep. So it's not like adamantium where there's like a finite amount or sure, vibranium sure. or whatever where yeah. it comes from space. It's yep. just like we can make more of this. Right. But no one ever makes pieces that big. Like it's expensive. Right. It's just like I mean, maybe maybe they do. But like us making this Captain America disc, it's like it's just so fitting compared to like the movies where it's just like we took this is this is all of the vibranium and we made a, a frisbee out of it. Right, right, right. So the company's excited because they'll just like to use it as an example of mm. stuff they can do. Perfect. It's not something anyone's ever going to like buy, yep. but it's just like, it's a literal like monolith mm-hmm. of this material. And I'm not even sure like just the material cost alone, I think on that shield will be like tens of thousands of dollars, which oh is also goodness. crazy. You're just like, it's so weird when it's like you hold something like that and you're like, it's not gold. It's not diamonds. It's not something that you normally associate value to. Right. But it's just like, no, nah, this is like, well, it's going to cost a lot, yeah. 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 So uh, I'm hoping that project still goes through because I think I'm known for the Captain America Shield. As you can see, like it's our number one video, 41 million views over so, the past So five you're years. synonymous with the Captain America stuff. So that's And, and lightsa- lightsaber's catching up. I think uh, okay. that's our second. Yeah, that's the, uh, that's the video that really like... And was that like good timing with Captain America? Yeah, so like uh, Civil War had just come out. Okay. So uh, we, we timed it right around the release. Yeah, went to see it. <laughs> you went to see it in the video <laughs> dressed as Captain America? Yeah. With the shield? With the shield. Oh, that's Put awesome. Magnus on my back too. So you... <laughs> what did people say in the theater? Uh, not too much, to be honest. Yeah, like, there's, there's like, some weirdo. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's but good. yeah, I mean, the whole video is just like having fun with the shield and, and breaking stuff. And like, it was very like, 
That's very wholesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is, which is what everyone would want to do if they got one of those. Yeah, it's funny because like we get all these comments from like the, the younger kids watching their videos and they think the workshop's like a, a toy land. It's right. just like, man, if I could go to the Hacksmith workshop, I would like play with this and that and this and that. Yeah. And here I am like going to work every day. I'm like, it's on the shelf. Like I'm not playing with this or that or, or whatever, <laughs> which is another thing that I want to work on. It's just like we're getting to the point now where we, we spend so much money on these projects Let's make some practical ones too. Okay. Like I would love to build a tumbler, like the Batman tumbler. Oh. You know? And that's practical? <laughs> I mean, I'd want to drive it around, yeah. wouldn't you? Yeah, for sure. You know? It's just like cuz I was always like, like as an off-road vehicle. On road. Oh, on road. Okay. <laughs> um, but like if you think about it, like in in the beginning where I was just like, man, I wish I wish some rich person would just like commission something cool so we could build something cool. Yep. And now with the business growing, it's just like I'm slowly becoming that rich person yes. and I can just do it myself. I'm like, why am I not doing it myself? Like right. I have these resources. I'm able to make a project where it's just like So I'll give you an example of a really simple one that was like super easy. Two summers ago, um, I found this kit online to make a DIY electric surfboard. Okay. And I'm like, sweet. I'm yeah. like, I can make a video about this. So I bought this kit and I built it in a video. I, uh, yeah, I had a place, uh, chrome vinyl it and I call it the silver surface surfboard. Perfect. But essentially it was me making a toy for myself. Yep. That also 5.1 million views. The video did really well. That's great. <laughs> and um, where did you ride it? On the Grand River. In I was just going to say, yeah. I was like, did you ride under the 401 with that thing? <laughs> yeah. So I want to find some more projects like that because, yeah, it was it was dope. Oh, man, that's awesome. I'm not even sure if I hit a full top speed. I think I was doing like 50 there. Yeah, you should <laughs> definitely be building more stuff for yourself. Yeah. That's Do the you one ever rip that thing? That's the problem. Like we, we filmed it like literally in September or October of yeah. that year. And then the following summer I broke my hand. Oh. So I hadn't used it since. And then, uh, this summer, um, we don't have the batteries for it anymore. So I got to make, I got to build a new battery <laughs> pack for it, but I want to, cause it's like, it's so much fun. That's great. Like, I've never surfed before in my life. Okay. And I got used to it pretty quick. I was just like, this is, this is sweet. Yeah. What I want to, like, I might do a part two to this video yep. where I make a hydrofoil. Yeah, you should. Because then that's even more silver surfery because it looks like you're floating out of the water. And if we make that reflective or yep. brown colored, if we're going on the Grand River again, um, it will actually be like silver surfer. So yeah. Maybe this summer. We'll see. <laughs> oh, man, that's awesome. So are you you want to make practi practical stuff. Do you ever want to make stuff like that you could actually sell? Yeah, so that's part of the reason that we've like started Hacksmith Retail is kind of like dip our toes into what is it like to actually sell stuff? Okay. How do you sell stuff? Okay. How do you uh, work with manufacturers and logistics and shipping and fulfillment, yada, yada, yada. So um, we started out very typical like YouTuber merch is just like our t-shirt sure. and whatnot and like hats and like sunglasses and things. Um, but now what we've been moving towards is like we're really going for the EDC, like everyday carry kind okay. of like category. Like and wallets and knives and stuff? Yeah. Okay. And um, the ethos behind it is like, I only sell stuff that I use personally. Mm. And I have pretty high standards. Yep. Um, so the goal is to find those cool things from manufacturers that already exist. Okay. And repackage them, rebrand them. But the long-term goal is to actually make our own product. Sure. You know, because... I feel like as an engineer, as an inventor, mm -hmm. that's like the pinnacle of you made it. 100%. Look, Ma, I made it. Like, the, the you can go speaks. to the store and you can buy this thing and yep. I made that thing. Yep. Um, so that is definitely a long-term goal. And um, the custom mini saver will be our most legitimate, like, okay. Hacksmith invented product. Yep. Um, and that'll be out later this summer, which I'm really excited for. Hopefully it goes well and cool. we'll, we'll start doing other stuff. Because um, the tricky part is like a lot of our projects are IP related. Yep. So even if we wanted to... Disney might sue us or something, or we'd right. have to figure out how licensing works, but they probably wouldn't even want to touch it because like, if it works, it's just like, that's kind of dangerous. Then it works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? So, um, it's, it's going to be interesting, but I'm excited to like, see what we can do and like getting used to selling stuff. It's just like, man, this is really neat. And I, I just love being able to have, like, I was telling you about this book earlier and I was just like, this is really cool. Like, yeah. and you're like, damn, that is really cool. It's yeah. just like, it's, it's cool. <laughs> Do you have any ideas for consumer products that you want to build? Honestly, like 
EVs, like not, okay. not full out electric vehicles, but like, uh, do you know what a one wheel is? Uh, is it, is it like the one that looks like a go kart wheel? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it's like surfing on land. And if you search one wheel, and is it goes? Okay, yes, yes, I know what that is. So um, they're freaking awesome. Okay. Like actually, so Yuri, uh, Yuri and Jacob were here like last week from the Straight Pipes, and they're yeah. like, "Hey, uh, yeah, here James is coming. Don't let him ride those one wheels in the shop." I'm like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, that's an odd thing to say. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I'd ride near okay. uh, any of the yeah. cars. Um, but there, it's it's an awesome, it's an amazing product. It's okay. just like it's so freeing. Like it's literally like snowboarding on land, uphill, oh, off road, do it. you name it. Okay. And um, they started out on Kickstarter, like probably like a decade ago now. Mm-hmm. I've had one for like five or six years. Of I've, I've actually worked with the company a few times. They've given me some free boards, so technically sponsored, not sponsored. Nice sponsored. Um, uh, but like. It's a, it's a product that I just like love so much. Okay. Like I'd equate it almost to like Harley Davidson, like how Harley Davidson became like a brand. Yes. Now one wheel isn't actually the brand, the company's future motion. Um, but they're called one wheels. Like everyone, it's yeah, like Kleenex so like or the, the product. Yeah. Like Kleenex, obviously. Yeah. So like now like one wheel is this, it's this thing that people love. Yep. And like it changes people's lives. Like it's, it's amazing for your mental health. Like it's just such an endorphin rush. You Um, love it, eh? Oh yeah. Like that's crazy. I've got ADHD too. And like standing still, but Mm. moving fast is fantastic. Cause you got that visual stimuli. But, um, there's, if you look it up, there's tons of stories about people like dealing with depression and whatnot. And it's just like, it's the one thing that like gets them out of bed and they're just like, they go coasting. Like I, I put my music on and I write, I love writing in like middle of the night when yeah. no one's around. It's just like, it's the best thing ever. Um, actually the last podcast I was on, I, I spent like five or 10 minutes talking about one wheel. And oh, like, really? It was uh, a <laughs> unbox therapy. So, uh, Lou later. Okay. Yeah. And it was, it was, uh, hilarious, but I won't go into, into too much depth, but basically <laughs> I want to invent something that people love. You something know? that like, that it's like their you favorite love as thing, much. Okay. You know, okay. like, you want to invent the bicycle. You, you want to invent yeah. the bicycle. And the problem is that's a that's a hard thing to invent. Yeah. Like the one wheel, like mechanic from an engineering standpoint, I'm like, I could have made this. Right. But I didn't. Yep. And now it's made. Okay. <laughs> so it's just like, well, I can't make a different one. Right. Or can I? No, I can't. <laughs> so it has to be. It doesn't have to be in that category. It though. doesn't. I, I'm okay. just. It's. It's a good category. Like. It's an up and coming category where like battery tech evolving and mm. motors and mm-hmm. like there's a lot of development in mm-hmm. that category but uh, to have a success like that is pretty unlikely like sure. it's uh like the popularity of one wheels is like exploded like there i remember um when i used to ride it around in kitchener um when i first got it it was just like i was the only one in town with yeah. one wheel and whatnot and then we got a few more for the team and then suddenly we like we had like three or four people one wheeling around <laughs> And then uh, we started seeing, like, people started getting them and whatnot. Yeah. I still think I probably, I own the most one wheels in the wireless. How, how many do you have? Um, strictly mine, I have, like, six or seven. Okay. And then <laughs> Why? I... Why? <laughs> uh, well, we got some for free. And hang one, out. Yeah, okay, for the yeah, most yeah, part, yeah. it's for other people. So, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. in addition to those, I have bought, like, four or five people one wheels. Okay. To one wheel with me. Because they are pretty pricey. What are they worth? Um, the good one's, like, three grand. Okay, US. so like a good bike, yeah, good bicycle. Um, but yeah, so like literally, I can I can get my friends together and we're like, it looks like we met up to one wheel, but it's yeah. like no, no, these are like all my one wheels. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And they're yeah, it's just they're so good. <laughs> so you you like it really changed your life, the one. I'd say so. Yeah, like yeah. Um, especially during the pandemic, like being able to like. That, that was also just like so surreal. I remember early days of the first lockdown. Yeah. Going out one wheeling Friday night at midnight through downtown Kitchener, uptown Waterloo, like where normally there's lines into the bars and the clubs. Yeah. And it's just like tumbleweed floating across the street. And it's just like, is this I am legend? Like, it, what's going it on? It felt like that, eh? And um, what we learned in recent years is like, you can go off roading with them. We go down mountain biking trails with these things. No way. And it's so much fun. And I feel like it's. It's a lot safer than mountain biking. Really? Like with, it, seems, it looks so gnarly. 
It is and it isn't. So like my fear with mountain biking, and I've actually I just got an electric assist mountain bike, which is fantastic. Was, it yeah, makes it so much badass, more fun yeah. because you pedal up a hill and you feel superhuman. You're just like, now I can do this for hours. Yeah. Um, but anyways, like the thing about when you're you're biking, if you crash, it's a big one. It's a big one, and you're gonna hurt yourself on the bike. Yeah. Like the likelihood of you actually like letting go of the bike and flying away. Yeah. Like you're gonna hit a tree. That's bad too. But with one wheeling, at least. You can feel like you, skateboarding. Yeah, and okay. you don't have to be going that fast. Like I, I usually happily ride around 20, 25 kilometers an hour, okay. which is still fast enough to hurt yourself. Uh, they top out at about 32 kilometers an hour. Yep. But the nice thing is sometimes when you crash, and because you only have one wheel, that's the issue. Okay. Like if anything goes wrong with that one wheel, you wreck. You're gone. Yeah. Um, sometimes you'll crash and you can just like keep running. And then you're like, okay, I'm good. And normally you look around and you're like, did anyone see that? Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> um but at least you're not you're not going to fall on a metal frame with a mountain bike or yeah. get stuck between tree, bike, and your body and everything. So, sure. like, <laughs> so I feel like it's safer. Um, my business partner doesn't agree with me. He prefers mountain biking still. Okay. I'm like, nah, man, it's safer. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Like, that being said, you like, talk I, about crashing. <laughs> like I, I, to me, I mountain bike, yeah. and it's just a strict no-fall sport for myself. Like I, I don't fall. Like yeah. if I fall, I've, I've gone, I've pushed it too far. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> but it sounds like you crash on the one wheel. I, I have, um, honestly, I've, I've been pretty good for the past few years, but like literally a month ago I crashed like pretty hard twice. Mm. Um, the one time I did recover, like, uh, I like ran off the board, but the board actually like hit my ankle. Uh, and, like, yeah. That was pretty painful. And the funny thing was I was like texting at the time, but I was literally, <laughs> it was hilarious. I was going through a gravel parking lot. <laughs> And there's a group of teenagers just hanging out, and I like bail hard, like right in front of them. But I, I recover because I like quick footwork. And I'm just I'm still looking at my phone, and then I just like calmly turn around and I walk back to the one wheel, yep. get on, and ride away. That's hilarious. <laughs> but then like literally a week later, I was just going out for a ride, and I hit a patch of mud the wrong way. I wasn't paying attention. Mm-hmm. I had my hands in my pockets, oh. which is the worst. And it was it was literally after a dirt trail, onto pavement. Oh. And I went down hard. I like rolled my ankle. I bashed both wrists. I had a whole bunch of road rash. Um, but I had like my my uh, earbuds in. I was mm-hmm. listening to music, so I was just like in my own world of pain, lying on the ground, being like, "What's wrong?" Like, okay. And then I hear this voice <laughs> from the distance. It's just like, "Are you okay?" And I was yeah. just like, I look around. <laughs> There was a guy barbecuing in his driveway, like right next to where I crashed. <laughs> and I just like, I pull my earbud out. I'm just like, <laughs> and then I put the ear, I, w- I probably would have laid there for like five or 10 minutes, but since he saw me, I was like, up. I got up, I got back on the one wheel very carefully and I started riding away again. <laughs> Cause that's a neat thing. Like I've, I've literally like tossed my one wheel by accident, like down, like escarpments and whatnot. Oh my they goodness. are durable. Wow. Like you're the thing's going to break, not the one wheel yeah. and whatnot. And like I've taken it out. They're water resistant, okay. but they're not like actually waterproof, but they're the funnest thing ever to ride in the pouring rain, like splashing through puddles and whatnot. And it's a risk, obviously. Like you could bork your Dude, board. You sold me. You sold me. It's, I need one. It's just, they're so good. So oh, good. I'm going to ride it around the racetrack. Oh yeah. yeah that's yeah. the, that's the other fun thing to do with them. Um, uh, do you know Pursuit OCR in Toronto? No. It's the uh, Canada's largest indoor adult playground. It's like Ninja Warrior shit. They got foam this. pits. They okay. got rings. They got monkey... All kinds of stuff. Um, they've got a drift bike course. So drift trikes. Yes. So you can pedal around this like course. Oh, and they've got like go. a few like... Um, what, pump track things. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. like this cool corridor with like LED lights. It's amazing to blast your one wheel through there. Like I know the owner, so he lets me. Okay. Um... I don't think he'll... Uh, what are the odds I show up and say, James sent me here with this? <laughs> that might work. Yeah, that okay. might work. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a, it's an awesome place. And it's just like, it's uh, pretty close to the airport. Wow. How Toronto. did I not know about this? Yeah. Yeah. If you try any of those, you can see like they got a giant foam pit, ball pit, like you name it. But uh-huh. the one wheels are so much like... The other thing is like pump tracks. Like, yeah, be, I love like pump if you tracks. Fi- if you fan- find a BMX pump track, yeah. that's so much fun on the one wheel. You're just like... Okay. Because like you can go up high on the like yeah on the, the berms and, and stuff and whatnot, yeah and it's it's so fun so you guys actually ride on mountain bike trails that's crazy yeah 
I'm a pretty good one wheel rider, but okay. like there's people who like have started like it's like skateboarding in the beginning. It's like what can we do on this? Right. And that's kind of cool because like there's a whole bunch of people actually pushing mm-hmm. the envelope of what you can do with a one wheel. Yeah. And like people take them off huge jumps and drops and like do like 180s and flip like all kinds of stuff. Right. And it's just like it's evolving right now. Like we're in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's so <laughs> funny. That's so funny. So you want to invent something that ha- that has a big impact like that. Like wh- watching a couple of your videos, one thing that I that I notice is like a lot of the things are hardwired in, and it would be ideal if they weren't. Yeah. So that's that's a big issue with like ninety nine percent of any invention in a TV show or a movie. It's just like we don't have a power source for it. Right. So we can cheat right now mm-hmm. by running a cord and being able to have a big battery elsewhere. Right. Um, which is cool for our videos because it's like this is what's possible. Like once we like hit that next paradigm shift of yep. energy storage, mm-hmm. it's gonna unlock so much shit. And it's just like, well, why can't we try making some of that stuff right now? Right, without the hardware, both out the, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because right now, like, we are just making a prototype. Yeah, it's like the lightsaber. The, yeah. That's a corded electric one. That one's pulling 25 kilowatts of power right now. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> like That thing looks legit, too. Yeah, and it's a solid blade, so you can actually, like, we yeah. had a lightsaber duel with them. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Crazy dangerous. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but we can at least, like, show what's possible. And since we are just doing these prototypes and whatnot, no one else is because it's like oh well we don't have the power supply so why would we right right now so are you like do you like i i look at the future and i have this vision of like nuclear fusion you know what i mean yeah no i can't wait till we have a power cell yeah whatever that power cell is whether it's nuclear or whatever see i feel like that's something to to look at and potentially like invent or something like that or are you are you that into energy i am but it's just like I know that like the best universities and research facilities in the world are like working on this stuff. Right. And like, it would be pretty cocky to be like, sure. Oh, I could do that. Okay. And it's just like, cause you know how much work goes into even oh, like insane, inventing yeah. stupid stuff. Yeah. Let alone like game changing technology <laughs> yeah, and yeah, whatnot. Yeah. Because yeah, I get a, a ton of comments being like, Oh, why are you wasting your time making these cool projects when you could like, crack nuclear fission it's like <laughs> well I uh, thanks for the compliment but it's just like why aren't you solving cancer it's just like I'm an engineer like what? <laughs> I have no no experience in that field whatsoever you know yeah um, so it's that's that's the one gripe I have with like movies like I love movies for inspiration and whatnot yeah but they create so many unrealistic expectations yeah, there's the duel <laughs> oh my goodness or volcano suits to could you safe. hit each other with those volcano suits on? Uh, you could briefly. It would still <laughs> Did burn you try through. It? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it would still burn through. Oh, that's good. Pulled an Obi Wan. Nice. <laughs> Thanks, Mitch. <laughs> um, shoot, where was I? You solving cancer? Yeah, it's just like no, I can't. <laughs> like. Um, but with the movies, like a, a big one is like Spider Man. Like Spider Man is like one of like the biggest superheroes out there, right. and like one of the most relatable for kids. Because he's a kid when he becomes Spider-Man, typically in most comics and sure. whatnot. Yeah. And um, the amount of people trying to figure out like real life web fluid, mm. just mixing chemicals together and and whatnot, it's just like, no, that's that's not gonna work. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And it's just like, but in the movies, that's like how he did it. It's just like, oh, it's that simple. Yeah. It's just like, well, nothing is nothing is ever as simple. Even mm-hmm. my videos, like we gloss over a lot of like the really hard stuff, and it's just like, oh, that was really easy. It's just like. We actually spent like two months on that, guys. But like, yeah, in the video, it was twenty seconds. So uh, I, I guess I can't blame you for assuming that it was just like done. Right. Right. <laughs> so mm. it's it's tricky managing expectations, and I'm hoping what I can do through my videos is show what is possible. Yep. Inspire people to like push the envelope, mm-hmm. but still do it with a bit of a sense of realism, where it's just like, yeah, okay, you gotta like set your expectations in a fairly yeah. reasonable yeah i'm not saying don't like don't dream like yeah for sure dream mm-hmm. but like there's some things where it's just like mm, like the perpetual motion the amount of people out there who like believe like yep if i can figure out perpetual motion it's, it's just like the basic laws of physics say no right you don't need to try and figure it out like right 
<laughs> you know? And that's actually been an interesting like side effect of being an inventor on YouTube. We get some pretty crazy emails from some like people who are like working on that we, shit. We've figured out the next big thing. I just I just need some funding. I just uh. I bet your team can take it the rest of the way. And it's like <laughs> Yeah, maybe. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> you know. Huh. So you're just going to you're just going to continue to do that stuff and wait for the power sources to get there. Pretty much, yeah. Okay. And then as far as the the working project goes or the product, potential product, hopefully it just like as we make more and more stuff like like we're we're getting pretty good at like really quick like you said skunk works. We're yep. really quick turn from idea to prototype and once we have the right idea, why wouldn't we be able to go from prototype to product then? Sure. And whatnot. And the, the neat thing is, since we've been building up this huge audience, mm -hmm. we've just built up a potential customer base. Oh, yeah. And like, the thing, like Kickstarter is great and all, but like half the time you're investing in like, I've never heard of these people before, well, or this exactly. company before, and you don't know if it's going to happen. Whereas I feel like if we came out with like something really cool on, on Kickstarter funded, or something, yeah. it would get funded because... Oh, these guys know how to make stuff. Yep. They've been making stuff for years. Like, yeah, you have a reputation is, and you know? you're out there, yeah. So, we'll see what happens. Oh, no, that'll be good. I can't wait for whatever product you build. <laughs> Do you uh it's funny like in you in the YouTube world, views are the metric. Yeah. And then like how do you how do you feel about that or I guess to continue on in the consumer world, you know, sales is, is the metric yeah like it's a different it's it's, it's two, two very it's a, interesting yeah. interesting things because like think about a traditional business so mm -hmm. let's let's say your business sure you sell really nice cars and refer your customers are worth like 50 100 200 thousand dollars or something yep when they buy something from you yep on youtube if you look at just adsense yep <laughs> my customers are worth like a fraction of a cent for every view, sure, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it's just like, it's a different game to play. And it's especially weird going back and forth between that, where it's just like, wow, if we had like 100 customers that bought $50 worth of stuff, right? that's a bunch, that's, oh, wow. So then the question becomes is how can you like kind of monetize that audience mm -hmm. that isn't actually worth that much to you the way it is, Yep. but it could be. Right. And it's just been a really interesting thing to kind of realize where it's just like um uh, like i'll meet other business owners and like hear about like the effort they put into like customer acquisition and whatnot and the money and whatnot right, and you have that pool <laughs> i have that people. pool yeah. but it's just like turning those people into customers mm -hmm. not that easy obviously mm -hmm. um and it's just like a completely different game so it's just like just because i have 12 million people that doesn't mean i can get a million people to buy my thing right or even hundred thousand. It'd be great people. if you could. It would be great, yeah. but like that's just that's not how things work, right? You know. So it's it's really interesting, like playing that back and forth. But like especially with YouTube, you still everything is an investment, which is yep. I think one of my favorite parts about YouTube. It's like even if I spend a lot of money on a project, it's potentially a investment in AdSense. Right. It's a residual return. Right. I might like, maybe the video didn't do that good and maybe it only got like half a million views or something. But over the next few years, it gets a few million views. Yep. And suddenly I look back and just like, oh, wow, that video did actually make yep. a lot of money. And there's a, there's a, a few, I don't think I can think of any right now, but like there's a few videos where it's just like, it was a really easy video to make mm. and we weren't expecting it to do well. And then, okay, this one's, that's a perfect example. Fun this, with freezing rain. This is my number two top video of all time. No way. Yep. 40, oh, 40 million <laughs> views. Okay. Yeah, we can watch the whole thing. It's only about a minute long. So it was an ice storm. Just a classic ice storm. Yeah. yeah. This part's not that exciting. I don't even know why people stuck around long enough. Um, open the doors, break the ice, yada, yada. Yeah, and, so the and, car's covered in ice. Yeah, like and it I is. I get inside and I roll down the window. Classic. And, like, there's lots of other videos like this. Yeah. But for some reason, this video popped off during, because of a big ice storm. Yeah. And every winter, it would get millions of more views. <laughs> and the crazy thing is that that's my first car. That was a Nissan Versa. Nice. That's 0% nice. financing. Perfect. Paid it off over four years. Perfect. This video has paid for that car. No shit. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ad revenue. I think this video has made, like, 20 grand, which is more than the car, actually. Yeah. 
Um, and again, it was just, oh, this is cool. I'm going to film it on my phone. Yep. And I love how many views it has and that it made me that money. Yep. But then when you look at like the channel I've built and the projects I've done, and then it's just like, this is <laughs> my number two video. Slap in the face. Like, um, and it, it almost became number one briefly. Like it almost dethroned Captain America. She was like, please no. Like, I don't want to <laughs> delete this video. But I, yeah. Oh, number three now. Okay, okay so okay. Thor Stormbreaker beat it, and Lightsaber will surpass it at some point. Yeah. Um, the other interesting thing was looking at the demographics of that video. Mm. Sometimes when it picked up, it was like Southeast Asia and whatnot. So it was places that had never seen ice before. And they're uh, like, wow, this is cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the other hilarious thing with that is like, it appeals to a very broad audience. So right. that's the only video on the channel that has 50% men to 50% women watching mm. that video. And what, are, what is it otherwise? <laughs> you want to guess? Let's hear it. Oh, uh, hang on. Let me guess. It is 2.2% women. It's actually higher. It's higher. It's about 95% male. Okay. 5% female. And like okay. it, some videos, it's like 90-10. Okay. And others are like 98-2. Yeah. Like a lot of our stuff is very like... <laughs> Right, but cool YouTube, for the guys. YouTube skews higher for men, regardless. I think on average, it's I probably th- changing very rapidly. I think actually. so. That's that's one thing I wish there was more like more publicly available metrics across YouTube. Mm-hmm. Like, there's lots of platforms out there that like you can see like Mr. Beast's views and subscribers per day, per hour, and whatnot. Yeah. But like, I'd love to see a bigger trend. Like, okay, what's what's actually going on? On the platform as a whole. Sure. What know? is the wave that everyone's riding? Exactly. Yeah. Do you have any? Uh, do you have any like philosophies or anything that's kind of grabbed you lately, or any any like instrumental? I always want to. I want to tr- start implementing this question. Any like instru- in- instrumental or you know fundamental like books you've read or anything like that? It's funny you should mention books. I like books. Okay. But <laughs> comments, comments on you on your YouTube, those. Okay, I used to read every single comment. Okay, and I still kind of do every once. In, now that I only do a video a month, sometimes I'm like, all right, refresh, scroll, read scroll, them scroll. all. But literally for the first four or five years, read them all, which I think is smart. It is, but there's like there's a lot of shit in there. Sure, <laughs> um, and like ninety nine percent positive. Yeah. 1% negative, but all it takes is, depending on your mindset that day, that one negative comment's just like, mm, just yeah. kick me when I'm down. Yeah. <laughs> Guess I'm going to stay down for the rest of the day. So anyways, I found one of these sites, I think it was vidIQ, that like compiles all your stats and whatnot. Okay. And I realized my channel has over half a million comments on it. I think today it's over wow. 600 or 700,000. That's a big book. It's not a book, big book. <laughs> It's several hundred books. Yeah. If you assume a, a standard comment length of like 140 characters, like a tweet. Sure. Half a million comments is the equivalent of 200 full length novels. Wow. Now, I That's like a library. Reading, but I haven't read 200 books in my life. But you've read. But I've read 200 <laughs> books about me in the form of short <laughs> shitty haikus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? And again, in that perspective, like. Well, ninety nine percent is good. That's great. Yeah, yeah, but two percent—that's a lot of that's words. That's four books. That's four full length books <laughs> talking about how you messed this up, or you're an idiot, or like why'd yeah. you do that, or yeah. like you suck, like man. So it's it's something I've been dealing with my entire like YouTube career. It's just like trying to like keep it, de- and I'm, I'm definitely getting better. Yeah, but it's like it's something that like you don't realize like it's so much easier to leave a, like I've never had a bad fan experience in person oh of course yeah and it's just like it's the, the keyboard warriors and whatnot it's just like would you really say that to my face never, like, never. you know yeah and uh, it's, it's it's a hard thing to uh, to get used to but actually that uh, reminds me of my my previous point about like it just being numbers mm-hmm. and like you start to get like Desensitized. Uh, desensitized the numbers is like million. I want two million. It's just like, yeah. Oh, are you greedy son of like, yeah, <laughs> like a million's a lot. Um, and I think again, this was another uh, Casey Neistat quote, but it was just like, the issue with YouTube is like, think about any other um, career in like entertainment mm-hmm. 
or uh, media and whatnot. Like think about like doing a live show as a rock star or something. Right. And you got like 20,000 people in front of you cheering. Yeah. Right. When you finish. Yeah. Think about YouTube. You put all this work into this video. Like you've stayed up late nights on end. You hit publish. You go to bed. Silence. Yeah. Yeah. There's comments. Yeah. But that's still not like, there's no roaring applause. There's no good job. Yeah. You just, you, you made something really cool that comes later, you right. know? And it, it's, it's an interesting flip on mm -hmm. like being like, like being a YouTuber is being an artist. Like you're, yeah. you're a creator, you're, you're an entertainment ent entertainer. Like, mm -hmm. but unless you're doing like live things where you get that, you feed off your audience. Yes. yes. It's kind of hard to like have that same experience. Of yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> I saw this really funny picture that kind of like hurt me. It was yep. just like, it was a pie chart and it's like life as an artist. In the eighties, it was like 25% making art. Yep. 75% sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Right. And then it was just like 2020, 25% being an artist, 75% social media. Oh. I'm just like, oh. That's sad. I was born in the wrong decade. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Is that, like the, the stories you hear about like the 80s and whatnot. Sure. And now it's just like, no, we're all just glued to our phones. Yeah. And it's just like, you got to play the game if you want to be successful. And you're it's just true. like, I don't want to play the game. Yeah. I don't like social media, but I got to be on it. Yeah. And Could you hire some? I mean, it, like people smell it a mile away if you hire someone. But we, we did have a social media guy who like helped make content and sure. whatnot. But again, the problem is especially like, being an influencer and whatnot, your fans are here for you. Yeah. If you start like showing them behind the scenes stuff without you, yeah, there's some hardcore fans who are gonna be like, whoa, that's awesome. Like great example of that. Like uh, last year we decided to go hard on our vlog channel. Okay. So uh, we put one of our video editors, it's like, all right, it's your baby now. Make a weekly video okay. on like cool shit happening in the shop. Okay. And yeah, there's cool shit happening in the shop. But I was like, not always in the videos and whatnot. And over the year, the views kind of just like kept going down to the point of like, okay, now we're like seriously losing money, like making like, like, like 20, 20, 30,000 views right. and whatnot. And I think it could have worked out. Yep. But for it to work out, it really would have had to been like me right. bringing you on, on the day in the life of the hacksmith. Cause like, I do have a cool life. Yeah. And I'd love to share that with my fans, but like, <laughs> it's a lot of work to make vlogs too. And it's like always being on and like, yep. so I don't know if I'd ever do that. Cause like, it, it blows my mind. Like people like Casey Neistat, like three years straight every single day. That's insane. Like insane. He Insanity. had a system and like the beauty with that is like, once you get that system working, mm -hmm. I mean, it can't take more than 24 hours to make that video, right? Right, right. Whereas, like, if you post a video when the video's ready, you might sink weeks or months or months and, like, For never sure. even post it or something. For sure, yeah. You know? So, like, getting to that point of efficiency where, like, you're making good content and you're mm -hmm. able to make it again and again and again. Yep. That's amazing. But it's not really a rabbit hole I want to go down right now. No, um, no. Even though, like, yeah, like, I run a, a cool freaking company and I do a lot of cool stuff throughout the day. Yep. And if I could like hold my phone up the whole time and like show Log it off, it, yeah. it would probably do well. Yep. But I got to like focus my energy on what is going to work best, which right, right now is those big videos, the big videos. Right. So it is a little frustrating personally. Cause it's just like, again, back to like, I kind of wish I could just go in the garage and like, that was another thing I never realized. Um, now that we have like a full video team and we have lights and mics and mm -hmm. you know, the whole nine yards and whatnot, I can't just like walk out there and start working on something. Right. I have to tell someone, Oh yeah. I'm going to go work on something. They're like, okay, well like 10 minutes, mm -hmm. like, but I want to do it right now. And then like, <laughs> there's been times where I've been scolded for like using my phone or like putting a GoPro up and they're like, that footage looks like shit. Yeah. It's just yeah, like, yeah. I know, but like. I was inspired. I had to make something. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, there's part of me that wants to like get back to some of that, mm -hmm. but the problem is that the current strategy doesn't quite no, work. I can bring that. bring a little, little bit of that back. And then, um, the other hilarious thing I, <laughs> I realized like just a few months ago, if you told like 
garage James five years ago, you're going to have a 13,000 square foot facility, all the 3D printers and CNC machines and all the tools. Yeah. You'd be like, holy shit. Right. Everything. That's the dream come true, you know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what I realized a few months ago is like, yeah, I do have all those things. Yep. But since I've also built this giant team, everything's always in use. Right. I can't just walk out on the shop floor and be like, I'm going to screw around with this this go-kart engine all day or something yeah, or, yeah, or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Just like, uh, no, that table's being used. Those power tools are being used and whatnot. Right. So uh, <laughs> quite literally, I ended up, um, <laughs> I found myself a workbench. Okay, good. And I pushed it into the corner of the shop. Nice. I'm like, this is my corner. Yeah. And it's just like this tiny little corner. It's just like, <laughs> good. I've, I've started building it up a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause I was actually, I was, trying to work on a project to feel like passionate about engineering again. So I'm, mm. I'm working on a, a Hawkeye collapsible bow. Okay. What's a Hawkeye collapsible bow? Uh, Hawkeye, like from Marvel. Okay. The, the archer. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, a, um, I'm not a so he's got a bow okay. that he okay. can like whip out and okay. suddenly you can shoot arrows. Okay. This has been done before. Okay. Like 3d printed and whatnot, but they use an elastic band. Oh, well, so it's not, it's not yeah. a real bow. Okay. Yeah. So I want to design one that yep. you can whip out Yep. and it's a fully strung, like Compound proper bow. weighted, Okay. and I've actually just about figured it out but when I started working on it I'm like I don't like the process right now for how we make videos mm. so I was just like I'm not going to film this Okay. so I had literally when I had time I'd like dink around the corner working on it like order new parts wait a few days try yeah. them out wait a few days new parts blah 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 and I have just about figured it out okay. but I haven't touched it in like months so and <laughs> I'm going to have to make a video about it at sure. some point. And now I'm just like, I'm regretting. It. It's just like, I'm going to figure out how to make a video, even though I did all the design. Already. Anyways, you can just <laughs> redo the whole thing. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's ultimately what I'll do. And it's yeah. nice because it's just like back in the day, like if I bought all those parts and then had to buy all the parts again, that would have been like a non-starter. Right. But now like I can afford to, it's like, all right, I'll spend another thousand dollars making another one of these Okay. Or, or, or something. Yeah. 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 But, um, between that project and the realization that I didn't have my own workshop anymore, even though I have That's funny, this amazing yeah. skunk works, um, that pushed me to be like, all right, at the new facility, this big room, this is my room. Nice. And I've earmarked that room to be like the Hacksmith R&D lab, like Adam Savage's cave, cave okay. kind okay. of thing. Yeah. And I'm going to have one of every tool. Nice. One of every like small laser cutters, 3D printers and whatnot. I'll still be able to use... Like, oh, I need a bigger part made? Sure. Okay, someone else make that for me. Yeah. But I want to be able to have everything under one roof where I can, like, I can just go in there at 3 a.m. Yep. on a Sunday night or, or whatever and just tinker away. And then there's part of me that's like, you know what? Maybe I'm going to build in, like, this crazy camera system where there's, like, Ooh. like this podcast set up where, like, there's cameras at every workstation. Yeah. So if I wanted to, like, record what I was doing, I could without the fuss or muss about like yeah. scheduling someone's time to come come watch and whatnot. So um, it's almost like uh, the first Iron Man movie when uh, Dummy the robot had the camera okay. and Tony Stark was trying to fly for the first time. Yeah, yeah. Like that's the idea where it's just like yeah. I'd love to, I would love to capture those moments of like how like uh, mm -hmm. Eureka. Yep, yep, yep. And the problem is sometimes we don't capture it anymore because. It wasn't scheduled. I was right. Like, well, you can't schedule. Hallelujah. Like no, you know? no, no. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta choose your battles. So I, I'm, I'm really, I'm looking forward to having that space, and I'm hoping that brings back some of my passion for engineering. Because in all this, like building up the team and whatnot, I've ended up doing more of the business stuff. And like, for sure, I'm a glorified actor sometimes, where like yep. I come in and it's just like, we're gonna make this thing, and it's just like, well, these guys are actually making it. Yeah. <laughs> kind of thing so i want to try and get that back and hopefully figure out how to like blend that back into the content yep where it works out for the business and whatnot because i'd still love to like i would love to have a team that makes its own videos and i just like i step back right right and, right like content gets made mm -hmm. you know but for years it's been it's been so connected to me yeah and it's still going to be connected to me for the indefinite future yeah but that's the dream. Like that's the dream of any business is to have it run. Is have it run. Yeah. By itself. Go away. With minimal. Yeah. Minimal interaction from your part. Right. So that's that's the constant struggle, and it's yeah. <laughs> so do you like? 
I hear you saying, you know, that you you build up this this tolerance to the numbers and it's like, well, you know, you get 2 million views, you want 3 million views, you have 12 million subscribers, you want 24 million subscribers. <laughs> you know, to so many people, it's like, and to even yourself, like, wow, you've made it. You know, yeah. you've made it. You're, you're it famous. It feel like you made it. Which right. It's a weird so, thing to say. And it's like, maybe it's like to the fans who, who would want to have 12 million subscribers. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, what do well, you say to them? <laughs> <laughs> it's hard because it's just like I don't feel yeah. successful I don't feel even that famous I don't feel like I've done it or I've made it right I'm not allowed to sit back yeah I've I've barely even scratched the surface on like starting to enjoy sure. life with the new resources I have um, that's another thing I've like uh, joining the go-karting league yeah and I a bunch of my guys joined it with me I'm like this is fun I got I gotta choose more fun things mm-hmm. like I have I have the resources now to do fun stuff. Yep. Why am I not doing it? Right. So I'm trying to bring that back. I'm hoping to hoping to get more passionate about projects again. Because, um, like, I've hired some brilliant engineers. Yep. And it's gotten to the point where it's just now like, oh, man, am I a shitty engineer? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And it's just like, I need one of those wins where it's just like, now the Hacksmith made this and it was fucking dope. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And I feel like the Hawkeye bow it looks pretty slick. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty like my, my goal for that is to be able to like wear a big coat and be able to like pull it out and yeah. shoot an arrow in like bullseye. I don't know, like three, four seconds flat or okay. something like something crazy. And the fun thing with that is like, as I'm like building this bow, there's various steps of making it like folding, making it spring loaded, yada, yada. I can do this really cool thing where I show, okay, this is the base bow that I bought. It's a standard recurve takedown bow. Okay. You plug in the limbs. Yep. You screw in those. You attach the string. You're ready to shoot. How long does it take to do that? Yep. A minute yep. or something. Yep. 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 Then you move to like my first prototype that's like hinged. Okay. No longer there's any bolts. You just have to go. Mm-hmm. And that's like half the time. And then you move on to the third iteration where it's like the next part of the limb is also hinged. Right. And it's faster and faster. So what I'm what I'm hoping for in that video is like that very clear demonstration of like, this is what we have. Yep. I made it better. I made it better. I made it better. This is freaking awesome. Yeah. You know? And it's it's always cool to be able to show that comparison from start to finish about like uh, the process. Because mm-hmm. that's the neat thing. It shows the process. It's like... Yeah, if I went straight from this bow to the finished bow, maybe it would have taken me years or something, or like all the indecision and whatnot. I was just like, no, I'm going to break this down. It's it's something that Elon Musk always says, like anything's solvable as long as you break it down into the core components and systems. And I feel like a lot of people who try and invent stuff get caught up in not that. They're like, no, it's got to do this. And it's just like, well, what are the stages to get to that? Right. And being able to focus on what you can do will open up new doorways to what you can then do for sure. And it's just, that's why I love making things. It's just like everything you do, especially for like being an engineer or creator, every project I've done has taught me something. Yes. yes. And now like I've got like great, I like you can throw like an idea at me and I'll be like, okay, well this is how we do it. Yep. And I still have that going for me. Like mm-hmm. I've got some brilliant engineers who can do stuff that I can't. Sure. Um, like so- I don't do any software or electrical or anything like that. Never, yeah. never bothered learning. Decided I can just hire people who are good at it. Smart. Um, but then um, like sometimes I'll be the, I don't know, have you ever heard of the, the rubber ducky for computer programmers? No. So when you're writing software and whatnot and then something goes wrong. Okay. And the, the error could be anywhere. Right it really helps to explain what you've done to someone okay. to help figure out where you went wrong. Right, you'll go... So you, the rubber yeah. ducky thing is like, well, you keep a rubber ducky at your desk and you explain oh, what you okay. did to the rubber ducky. Yep. And the rubber ducky doesn't actually... Mm-hmm. Actually, this is a bad an- an analogy because I do actually do something. I don't just like sit there like a rubber ducky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's just like... Like that's that's literally the nature of my name. I'm like Hacksmith. Um, that came from like, it's a play on words from blacksmithing. Okay. Because I figure back in the day, before we had engineers and um, literally every trade. Yeah. Like, yeah. Every yeah, yeah. trade. Blacksmiths used to be the OG trade. 100%. They did everything. They yep. made the tools. They made the weapons. They fixed the things. Yeah. They 
they knew basic they made the horseshoes physics, they made everything yeah. you know wheels yeah. they were the og inventor engineer yeah. kind of thing so um when i came up with the word hacksmith back in 2012 decade ago now mm -hmm. um it was a play on words of blacksmith and the idea was as a jack of all trades yep. master of none yeah and that's why the logo is the anvil yep. for blacksmithing and a swiss army knife ah, okay for a jack of all trades it's like all these different tools yep um which is really, really cool. And the, the neat thing is when I made this logo, had no idea it would become such a brand. Right. Like, it's crazy to think about. Like, with 1.3 or 4 billion views, yep. people recognize this logo. Oh, yeah. And you think about, like, the companies, like Pepsi and whatnot. Like, yeah. obviously, that's still a lot more. But to get a logo that recognized, mm -hmm. where you can put it on a list of other companies' logos, and people will be like, oh, I know that one. Yeah, it's that's mind boggling, something. and it's just like I never, I never had the idea like ten years ago that like it would be anything like that, or like it's on thousands of shirts and like thousands of wallets out and like yeah, it's 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 everywhere. But um, yeah, that, that's the nature of the name, the the hacksmith. So like, no, I'm not an expert at anything I do. Sure, but I know enough about almost everything. Yeah, that. I'm pr I'm a really good problem solver, and even if I don't know how to program something or how to how to do something, I can I can give a pretty good idea of like, oh, well we're trying to do this, so let's break it down in these steps and solve it. So yep. I still have a few moments that, like that where I'm like, okay, I still got it. Yeah, I yeah, still yeah. Got it. My my advice is useful. Well, and, <laughs> and the the YouTube component to that, like the problem oh, that's solving, the other, that's is the other huge, huge thing. in that. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. like, and like. Engineers are notorious for being like boring, sure, monotone sure. Yeah, yeah. robots yeah. and whatnot. Um, and I feel like I've I've probably helped break the mold a little yeah, bit. Okay. Where it's like, yeah, we can be superheroes too. Like, yep. Um, yeah. Obviously, I guess Iron Man does a better job of that than me because it's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. can be a nerd, yep. but like a cool nerd. Yeah, you know. And I feel like that's very valuable too because like, I don't know. Even like when I grew up in high school, it's like. I was the nerdy kid. I wasn't. Very Is that what you were like in high school? Yeah, like I was homeschooled. Okay. So literally, I went from homeschooling to grade nine. Ooh, it's, that's a tough jump. Uh, Two thousand students. Yeah. Um, in Kitchener. In Kitchener. Okay. Uh, luckily, I lived across the street from the school. Okay. So, so you I, could spy on the kids beforehand. <laughs> so I could spy on the kids, and so I didn't have to have lunch at the school. Uh, I literally. It was probably worse for my social development, but it was just like, <laughs> yeah. no, nah, I'm going to go home. <laughs> yeah. I don't like it here Yeah, kind of thing. And like, I didn't even use my locker because I was just like, oh, I just keep my books at home and like, I'll just bring them and whatnot. Sure. Um, but yeah, like. Did you have a giant backpack because you had all your <laughs> books in it? <laughs> nah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, it was definitely a, it was a pretty rough experience for me going from like. Homeschooled. Homeschooled to, to high school. Yeah. Like fit, like, and the thing was like. I guess I'm a pretty smart guy, but like, um, I had pretty good grades, like out the gate. Sure. And I'm just like, this when I was homeschooled, I, I didn't do much work. Right. Like we, I think in grade two and three, my mom tried to bring like workbooks home, like, oh, you need to do this and that. And I was like, eh, I'd rather just read and okay. whatnot. And we like, I did more like soft education, like going to the library and, and stuff like that, but I never did any like proper curriculum. Yep. So to jump into high school without doing grades one through eight of any subject and wow. do well was like, huh. And I'm just like, wait, what did I miss? Yeah. Like, I must have missed something. And like math, math was tricky because I tried going into high school. Did you really school. not do any math at home? Not since grade one. Oh my goodness. Literally, dude. I tried, um, I had the grade nine math textbook and then they had that like little review section in the beginning of like what you should know. Yes. And I tried learning that. Didn't do very well. It was actually my worst course out the gate. Yeah. Like, I think at midterm, I was almost failing. Okay. And um, I remember my parents came to the teacher conference thing, and then they kind of explained. And then the teacher was like, oh, shit. Like, well, he's doing pretty good then. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know? And then after that, like, my grades in math class got up to, like, 80s and 90s and whatnot, and I just, I figured it out. But uh, the thing that homeschooling, like, I missed out on was that social development. Like, yeah. Being with kids. Like, 
how to behave in the in the schoolyard and the, right. the playground, whatnot. How to meet people, how to talk to people, yeah. and everything. So uh, that was pretty tricky. And then also ending up being kind of nerdy and whatnot was also just like, yeah, it's it's difficult. So like, I'm hoping what I'm doing through YouTube now is just like, it's cool to be smart. For it's sure, it's cool to do things. Yeah, and I feel like. I think I mean I haven't been in school in a long time, but like yeah. I feel like society is finally I agree finally moving towards like you know what nerds are cool yeah like jocks and athletes yeah they do cool stuff but yeah. like guess who's gonna get the good jobs no and 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 I I agree I think it's one like for me uh, I love books yeah. but I listen to them. Me too. Right. I, love I don't. I don't read that much, and I didn't read a whole ton when I was younger. But now I'm just reading as listening to as many books as I possibly can. Like yep. I do a lot of driving, and I think that is what is like, and podcasts as well. Yeah. You know, even if you are a jock, you you can hear a smart guy who's a jock on a podcast and listen to hours of what he's saying. Yep. So I think that I think that's what's changing it a little bit. And, yeah, and, and I guess I, almost part of it is like because of technology and because of the emergence of social media and podcasts and things. It's just like, when would you have heard that right. 20 years ago? Yeah. On the radio? No. I don't think the radio was no. ever. No. <laughs> oh, let's, uh, let's hear from this, uh, this nerd about this yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't happen. And, um, and you look at guys like, you know, the biggest podcast in the world is Joe Rogan. Yep. Look at some of the people he has on. Like yeah. some of the smartest people in the world. Yeah. And there's a huge appetite for it. Yep. So I don't know if it was like artificially suppressed when we were younger, being smart wasn't cool or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, we're, we're getting there. Yeah. <laughs> Man. So why, why were you, uh, what was the decision to be homeschooled? Uh, I think it was just my parents' decision. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think the excuse at the time to the school board though, was my brother was allergic to the cleaning supplies. Okay. So they pulled him and then they're like, well, we might as well pull Paul James too. Yeah. Um, he's two years older. Um, he actually went the full digital route. So he actually did online high school. Okay. Like just course based, like, I guess like e-learning, but I don't think they didn't even have like classes. Like yeah, now, now kids it? actually have zoom classes with their teacher. Right. Yeah. We used to just have to like do the work assignments by ourselves and good <laughs> luck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good luck. See you later. Yeah. Um, but since he started that before me, I saw that I'm like, and I had a few friends. I was nice, I had a few friends who weren't homeschooled. Okay. I had a bunch of friends who were homeschooled, but I I called them my street friends because yeah, I yeah. lived on my street. But they were normal kids. They went to school. Yeah. And whatnot. And I think I kind of started to realize like I'm missing out. I'm like, mm. and I made that conscious choice. I'm like, no, I want to go to high school. Yep. And um, the funny thing is, you can just <laughs> you can skip all of grade school and they'll just let you into high school. It's not like university where you need like right. grades or anything like that. It's just like, oh, come on in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now you can finally use the tax dollars that <laughs> we've been getting from you. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah. And then uh, in high school, that's actually when I met my business partner, Ian. Okay. And um, I met him in tech class and we were both kind of outcasts yeah he had these really big cauliflower ears okay. he looked like an elf yeah <laughs> um i had a almost a bit of a mullet i think it was fucking terrible nice uh nice. but um we we start we bonded over like technology and whatnot and yeah. we actually we joined the robotics club okay which also back then was kind of like a oh you're on the robotics club yeah totally but we made our robot cool we yeah. gave it underglow and speakers nice and, and stuff and then we ended up the first year we competed we went to nationals and we won first place. Oh, wow. So, when so we got all of Canada. Yeah. And Skills Canada. Yeah. And uh, we got back to the school and suddenly like people knew who we were. <laughs> right. And we were the cool nerds. Yeah. And it was just like, oh, sweet. Yeah. Um, so like it wasn't until grade 12 where I felt like. Accepted? Yeah. yeah. Kind of thing. You know, before I was just like, I went to my classes and I went home. Sure. And, and or whatnot. part of the, so the, part of the greater yeah. social yeah. structure yeah. of the school. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was interesting. And then. Would you, if you were to do it again or like, I, you're not married, right? No. Okay. If you, if you have kids or if you had kids, would you homeschool them? That's a really good question. Um, there's definitely some like benefits, I think. Yeah. Like I feel like. I mean, I skipped most of the school system, but I still personally feel like the school system is kind of broken. No kid. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like, if you have the time and the resources to teach your kid 
right, let's mm-hmm. say. <laughs> yeah. Um, you probably should, but yep. like, it's not that easy. Right. Yeah. Um, most people have to go to work. I don't know if you've heard about this, but like Elon Musk actually has a, I forget what it's called, but he's literally got an online school program for like gifted kids and oh. whatnot that actually groups you up with other gifted kids and there's a mentor. Love it. And you end up like uh, solving these big problems together and like <sighs> real life exp- like and stuff. I'm like, I'd sign my kid up for that. Yeah. Like, that is that is cool. And that was part of him having the resources and being like, man, the California school system sucks or, or yeah. whatever. Um, I'm going to make it better. Yeah. Here's some money. Let's, Which is let's what make he does. a better yeah. school, you know? Yeah. Um, so I don't know. Hopefully by the time I have kids, there's more options like that. Yeah. Or the school system has finally like caught up. But like, I, don't know if, I don't know if it's going to change that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I hope there's, I think there's more and more things emerging like that and more and more even groups of people getting together yeah. and, you know, hiring a teacher here or having someone sub in for a month and do that. Like, yeah, I mean, like, it's all those extracurriculars where you learn the real stuff, Yeah, you know? Um, and yeah, having more ability to do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's, so, that's get, it. so that's actually something I... Maybe not that level, but like with this new property and whatnot, mm-hmm. I'm hoping to at some point run like a summer camp or something. Cool. Because I think it's just like the, the Stark internship. Like I already have like, I've had over 25 high school students through. Nice. Um, and over a dozen university interns, maybe okay. even 15 at this point. Wow. We've had like, we've taught and had an impact on like a lot of young students coming through yep. our program, going through school and whatnot. And I'd love to be able to set it up where like there is some kind of like day camp or mm-hmm. summer camp where you like go to this boot camp yeah. where you learn like how to make stuff yeah. and whatnot. And like you got a welding class, a electronics awesome, class yeah. and all kinds of stuff like that. And I'd love, I would love to be able to do that. But right now I need to, I need to write the ship with YouTube, yep. get stable and then, um, hopefully start up these other these other business ideas that I have mm-hmm. and uh, create the whole ecosystem. You know? uh, it'll happen. It'll happen. I remember, like, obviously growing up next to my dad's shop, I got to learn how to weld at a young age. And by no means am I uh, any amount of a fabricator. Yeah. But, like, welding is like magic to a little kid. You oh, know, yeah. like, you realize... It's the best thing. Is it's using a metal hot glue gun. Yeah. You know? And it's, there's something so satisfying. I love, I love doing metal work. Like I actually recently blacksmithed for the first time. I made Gimli's ax. Nice. From Lord of the Rings. Yeah. And it was like a lot of fun. I'm like, I think I should sign up for a blacksmithing course mm. and learn more. And then I'm like, and then I'm going to build a forge. So yeah. <laughs> I can just, I can hit steel and whatnot. But like the thing I love about making stuff with metal, especially with welding, is just like, you're making something that potentially can outlast you. Mm. Mm-hmm. Think about everything else you make as a kid, like arts and crafts, your macaroni picture frame. Right. It's going to decompose and disintegrate. Yep. When you learn how to work with metal, it's just like, depending on what you make, if it's like cool or looks neat, it could stay on this earth for hundreds of years potentially. Right. And that's, it's kind of cool thinking about like a lasting legacy and whatnot. Yeah. Um, it's like besides like this giant Thor's hammer I'm building. Dude, that thing will last forever. Yeah. And I'm excited. We're going to like, we're going to drop it on the property by the road and it's going to be a landmark. Nice. And like, there's part of me that like, I've got so much space. I'm like, I've always liked sculpture gardens. Yes. I'm not yes. really an artist, but like <clears throat> I can make some cool big things. Yep. So I'm probably going to start making some cool big things because why not? Yeah. That's cool. I've got one idea. It wasn't my idea. It was one of my guys. Um, we have like 90 skids of concrete Lego blocks. Okay. Um, we inherited them from the previous tenant at our current facility. Yep. They literally like disappeared overnight, left the landlord high and dry, and oh, left geez. all these skids of concrete blocks. It's actually like half a million dollars worth of concrete based on what they sold them for. It was like $30 a block, and there's like 90 blocks per skid. But the problem is the company doesn't exist anymore. They just midnight they just disappeared. Move. Yeah. Wow. It's called light-built concrete. Okay. And it's a concrete foam mixture. Mm-hmm. You can actually screw into it with a wood screw. You can cut it with a wood saw. Interesting. And it's still like concrete. Yeah. Um, so we, we managed to convince the landlord. We're like, just leave it. Yeah. We'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've had to move them around a lot. <laughs> actually, like I love driving a forklift. They're There's awesome. nothing more satisfying yep. than moving stuff that you know. If you had to do it by yourself, like these skids, like you carry one block at a time, 90 blocks per skid. Imagine restacking just one skid. 
it would take you all day. Yeah. And here you do it in 10 seconds and you go grab another one. Yeah. I, I literally like, I called it the Great Wall of Hacksmith. Okay. <laughs> I made a three or four high wall along the fence to block us from the main road until the landlord got angry. He's just like, oh, it might fall over. Like, like it's not going to fall over. Yeah. But then I had to like restack them elsewhere. But like, I did it myself. I didn't get one of my guys to do it. I'm just like, no, no. I get the fork. Get some Red Bull. Get some tunes. Yep. I'm just going to, I'm going to be happy as a clam moving the stuff around nice. with a forklift. Yeah. So anyways, got all those blocks. They've turned out super useful because we like build walls. We like, you can build a temporary structure with them just like that. And then the other cool thing is uh, a bunch of the skids are actually of their, like, um, their shitty ones, the ones that the mixture wasn't quite okay, right. Okay. So we actually have a bunch of blocks that are kind of, like, slightly more foam than concrete. And there's some of them that, like, uh, literally disintegrate when you touch it. And there's ones where, you like, you could literally punch through concrete with your bare hand. Perfect and for, for you. And for a channel that, like, makes cool thing, like cool weapons and whatnot, <laughs> yeah. smashing concrete. It's awesome. It's just like, imagine actually having to pay for like Hollywood concrete. Yeah. That's probably like a hundred dollars, like a block. Oh, probably. You know, yeah. for a fake cinder block. Yeah. And we've got like this collection <laughs> of them. Um, it's going to be fun moving them. So you, they're it, yours. You're going to move are, them. Yeah. I'm going to move them all in the property. Nice. And then um, uh, Mike, one of my oldest friends and now uh, employee, mm -hmm. he had a great idea. He's just like, why don't you stack up a cube of these next to the 401? like a 27 block cube, yes. nine, nine, nine. Yep. And then spray paint it. Okay. Make a giant Rubik's cube. Yes. And it's just like, that's cool. And I'm like, okay, what's the next step? Okay. I'll spray paint it like a Rubik's cube. That's not solved. Put it next to the 401. Oh, I know. Tens of thousands, that. hundreds of thousands of people are going to see that and be like, what the shit? Yeah. Why is that there? Yeah. Leave it for like a month. Or if I want to like get really specific, like change it daily. Yeah. I don't yeah. think I'll do that. But change but it, it. But if I leave it for like a month and then one day I just paint it solved. Paint it solved. Yes. Good, good, good. Paint it solved. Yeah. Then all these people who have no idea who I am or why it's there. I've just created like a dinner time conversation of like, yo, that giant Rubik's cube just got solved. Yep. And it's just like. I love the fact that like it could like bring joy to so many people. Yeah. And it's it's not for me, it's for them. And it's just like such a fun like fun thing to do. And I'm just like I'm oh, excited man. about doing stuff like that, like making some big things that like people enjoy. You know? That's cool. <laughs> oh man. So actually I uh I just bought a house, but I uh that place I was renting is an old schoolhouse. Oh, like okay, a one room cool. schoolhouse. Yeah. And um the previous uh landlord and had a uh, a blacksmithing shop in the back oh cool so he had when we moved in all his stuff was he left all his stuff there he had a giant movie set iron maiden that he blacksmith that just sits in there so anytime i have people over i always like take a picture of them in the iron maiden <laughs> like that is awesome <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah no man are you is your new place not to get specific is it north or south of the 401 on the north side or south side? Uh, south side. Nice. Okay, yeah. I'm going to look for it. Yeah. It's I literally, that. The, the cool thing is, I mean, it's going to become public knowledge anyway, so I, I actually don't care at this point. Sure. Um, it's just past uh, Highway 24. Okay. Like literally just past the roundabout. Yep. Um, and the neat thing is it's on like that that slope into Kitchener-Waterloo. Yeah. Like 24 is the last Cambridge exit. Yep. The rest is Kitchener-Waterloo. So yeah. literally it's placed perfectly for all commuters where it's just like, I have the chance of being coming the new landmark yeah, for the whole city of kitchener Waterloo. That's awesome. And even Cambridge a bit. <laughs> so hang on, you go down the hill, right? On the 401? It's like on the hill as you're going On down. the left-hand side or on the south side? Uh, yeah, on the right-hand side if you're go coming down from Toronto. Okay, on the, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like across the street is the Cambridge shopping district with like Home Depot and Walmart. Right. Uh, Fast Eddie's. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I'm going to drive by like twice a week. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, if you ever want to come by for a tour, just let me know. I will. I'll yeah. stop in. We've, uh, the past four months, uh, we've been doing renovations. Okay. Like the building was like in the 1980s, so it was, it was showing its age a little bit. It was a bit of a, <laughs> bit of a shell, so um, we had to put a full sprinkler system in. Oh, we yeah. polished and epoxy sealed all the floors, nice. repainted everything, redid all the ceilings, new lighting, everything. It looks like a new, new building in there. I'm super excited. Yeah. They're just finishing up the bathrooms right now. Um, in the kitchen. Um, so it's going to be trick. I think it'll be done in like 
two to three weeks. Okay. So we can start the long and arduous <laughs> period move. of moving. <laughs> yeah. Because the problem is like we have a ton of stuff to move. So that's a lot of work in itself. But imagine moving this place. All the oh, workshops. We, we did it once. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like resetting up a new workshop the way you want it. Yeah. That's a ton of ton of effort, ton of time. Yeah. And then the question for us is like, our entire YouTube career, we're like, we're going to get ahead someday. We're going to have videos in the bank. Yeah, classic. Never happened. Yeah. <laughs> Never happened. Even now with like, okay, well, we're only doing one video a month. We'll get some, no. <laughs> Never going to So happen. the question is like, when we move, like, we'll, we'll, we will start the move slowly, move the stuff that's not going to interrupt business. Yep. But that's only so much stuff. So then we're going to have to make the decision of like, okay, are we... We're going to try and like put a pause on videos for a few months while we do this, Mm -hmm. effectively dropping our income from, first of all, it's at a hundred percent. Yeah. Then it was to 25%. (laughs) Now it'll be to zero. (laughs) You know, it's pretty scary from the business perspective. Or do we try and stress out and like make content as we're moving and all kinds of other stuff and haven't quite figured that one out yet. So I'm a little... But you're really. I'm in the to, eye of the storm right now. Yeah, like yeah, everything, yeah, like, I'm I'm pretty chill right now. But it's just like, there's gonna be more stress coming soon. <laughs> but hopefully, then it's green pastures from there. Right. I, I love like the new property. It's got green space. It's got trees. It's got forests. It's got a pond. Yeah. The building has windows. We have natural light nice, coming in. Yeah. And I feel like, even just for the whole company, it'll be a much healthier work because right now we literally work in a warehouse. Like yep. there's one office that has a window to the outside. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You know, so it's going to be so nice to be able to like eat lunch outside on the lawn and like go for a walk. Yeah. And we can have meetings in the in the forest. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we can set up a meeting room in, in Google Calendar and it's just like the clearing by the pond. <laughs> and it's just like you can go sit down there and have your one on one, your management meeting or, or whatever. Oh, that's you know? good. So I'm I'm really excited for that. I'm hoping that like I think it'll be a game changer for us. And like that's been like. That's been the narrative throughout. Like, I bought the house because it had a giant garage, right. which then started the YouTube channel. Yep. And then we went to this giant facility 10 times the size. I was like, whoa. And now we've got, it's about the same size facility for now until we expand it, but then all the green space. Mm-hmm. And now it's like, now we can do projects, big projects outside. Yep. Without, like, right now we have a parking lot and we'll do lots of stuff in the parking lot, but like, you're pretty limited in what you can do. Now it's just like, Oh, you want to like, I don't know, make a few cannons and that's, that's actually, that's a YouTuber collab I want to do. Okay. We've got all those concrete blocks. Yep. Challenge video. We build a cannon. Okay. We invite a bunch of YouTubers down. Okay. And you're welcome. Oh, great. Um, and I give you like two skids of concrete blocks. Okay. And like the day. Yeah. To build your own castle. Okay. And then we see whose castle lasts the longest. Nice. You know? Yeah. And like, how fun would that be? And it's yeah. like this cool challenge video and it's like content for all. Cause like you for can sure. film, you can vlog yourself building your castle and like, yeah, it's going to be the best castle ever. <laughs> Gets flattened or something, but yeah. like stuff like that. And it's just like, no, that be would really be cool. good. Cause that's, that's one of the other goals of this property. And like, yeah, I got a really cool name for the property too. Let's hear it. It's called a uh, Herc. Herc. Any guesses? Cause all the coolest names are acronyms. Hacksmith Engineering Recreational something. That's pretty close. Okay. Hacksmith Engineering Research Campus. Okay. Nice. Yeah. It's like Shield or Avengers and whatnot. I'm nice. Like, oh, I'm gonna make a really big So that's the cool thing. The the sound stage is closest to the highway. Yep. I'm gonna just have a big herc on the side of the building. Cool. And the beauty is like I love stuff like that because it's like it's not in your face because herc by itself is just a word. Right. You have no idea what it is. But because you have no ideas, you almost like remember it more. You like would. think about all the the companies along the 401 that are just boring ass companies. Oh, so many. You know, yeah. you're not going to take a second thought. But then you see like this acronym. You're like, what does it mean? Yeah. Like, what does that acronym mean? And, and then you look it up and you're like, wow, this is really cool. Yeah. And then like um, besides like the giant Thor hammer or the Rubik's Cube, I was like, how else can you make your building stand out besides making it look really cool? Mm-hmm. So like I literally, <laughs> I sent a screenshot of the uh, Stark Tower to our builder and <laughs> they made the soundstage look like like we've got this nice big like almost looks like a helicopter landing pad okay um and it it's got the same style and whatnot so first of all the building itself will draw your eye yeah um but then i was like you know what would also be cool 
buying an old like fighter jet or something that's been decommissioned. Yeah. Maybe modify it a bit. Throw that baby on the roof. A MIG jet on the roof. Yeah. yeah. Suddenly you're just like, what is that place? Why is it? Why is that there? Yeah. And if you move it or make it disappear every once in a while, suddenly it's like, wait, oh, wait a sec. I love this. You know. <laughs> So yeah, it's 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 my dream property right now. The yep. only thing it's missing, I would love like a decent body of water, like not a full you said size. You two lake. ponds, right? Yeah. You want to drive a boat in it? So the, the pond isn't too big, but yeah, obviously, like I feel like watercraft, like with the surfboard, yeah, it's really fun. But the issue is, it's so much work. Like people who have cottages, you got to go right. drive up to the cottage, get your boat. Like, yep. Imagine if you just had it, you know. And like it doesn't have to be big. It could be like an old like quarry or something. Like just big enough that you could do water projects. A hundred percent. That would be the dream. So that'll be the next property I'm looking out for. Hopefully, the, there was close one in, by one in Milton that uh, <laughs> we looked at. I, I looked at it like I I ride ride bicycles and I would ride ride by it for years and it was like for sale. Three hundred and fifteen acre pond, an old quarry That's in Milton. Huge. You could. What was the list price? I forget what it was. Oh. It was some, no, it was something like you know, shoot yourself in the head right now. Cause it was like <laughs> 3 million bucks for like whatever, 400 acres in Milton overlooking the 401 with like, Oh, this is years ago. This is years ago. Yeah. Don't you hate that? Like, oh, the amount of like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Life is nothing but a series of missed real estate opportunities. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we still wonder why we haven't invested. <laughs> It's going to burst yeah. at some point. Sure, <laughs> sure. But yeah, be, uh, besides that, like it's, it's the dream property. It's like we'll be able to do whatever we want there. What are you guys going to do for... So you recently got into go-karting. Yeah. What are you bought some do? ATVs. Yeah. So what are you going to do for trails. a track? We're, I've got a Bobcat already. Okay, so perfect. Like we're, uh, I, that's the other thing I'm excited for. Just like collecting construction equipment. Yes. Um, I've got a Bobcat. I've got two off-road... Uh, dual axle steering forklifts. Nice. That's a funny story too. We we bought one of them. Off road dual axle. Yeah, we we got one of them for like I think twenty five grand on like one of those auction sites, and then um, we called the manufacturer just to like ask some questions about it, and they're like, "You paid how much for it?" And we're like twenty five grand. And it's just like it was just recertified by us. We resell these for like seventy five grand. Nice. We're just like, oh, why don't we buy the second one? Yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, luck would have it Monday morning the auction company calls us and they're like the other guy who bought one didn't pay you want it for the same price and we're like okay we don't need to <laughs> yeah. we, we might sell one at some point my business partner really wants to sell one I kind of want to keep both because I like having pairs of things okay and I'd love to like make one like what do you do with them <laughs> they have a 50 foot boom oh wow they're big like the, the tires are this how tall how deep is your pond <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Jump off that thing. That was, that was the other thing. I was like, what if I dug a deeper hole? You know? Don't tell the town. Yeah. <laughs> that's, the, that's the huge thing. It's just like, imagine like, you know, like how companies are becoming so powerful. Like yeah. Think about like Tesla and Apple and whatnot. Once you have the resources and the money, <laughs> obviously you have to avoid like whistleblowers and whatnot. But like if you had all the, t like if you had a boring company, mm -hmm. boring machine. Yep. What's stopping you from building a friggin' giant underground, like, you Other know? than neighbors, yep. You know? It's just, like, it's kind of cool. It's just, like, I wish, like, maybe at some point we'll get, like, some property up north where you really, truly can just do whatever you want. Yeah. But it's just, like, but why couldn't you? Yeah, you, you know? gotta make that happen down here, though, I think. It's way cooler to <laughs> do it. Tunnel under the city, you know? Yeah. Got my own underground <laughs> network, you know? Yeah, that's how you end it's up in jail. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Call before you dig. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, construction equipment. So I'm just going to I'm going to start collecting more and more in construction equipment. But one of the ideas I had for the double forklifts is like an infinite zip line. Infinite you mean, hang on. How would it be infinite? <laughs> so you park the forklifts yeah. on either side of the property. Okay. You attach a steel cable between the two. Yeah. You start driving? You extend, no, you don't drive. Okay. You just you lift one all the way up, mm -hmm. and you have the other one lower. So you zip line down from the high one to the other one. But then you lift that one, yes. and you lower the other one. <laughs> and now you just go back and forth indefinitely. So I want to kind of do that as a one-day, like, stupid build thing. And I feel like it's it's stupid enough and weird enough that maybe it could actually be a good video. Yeah. Still not sure if it would be, like, a banger, but I'm just like... 
pretty fun. Yeah, dude, I think you have enough of these <laughs> fun ideas to not have to worry about content during your move. Like, I think your whole, like, the way your brain works, I think the whole move could be content. Yeah, we, we're probably going to try it, like, see what we can do, but, like, yeah. Okay, good. It's always easier said than done. Like, yep. I've always been an idea guy, like, and um, that's the funny thing is, like, people always ask me, like, how do you come up with the ideas? I'm like, the ideas are the easiest part. They, like, right. They just come naturally to me, like... Maybe I'm I'm special in that like I come up with ideas really easy, but like we're literally taking ideas from the movies. Sure, it's almost like hand fed to me, yeah. you know. Uh, except for like infinite length zip lines with forklifts, that's just kind of a weird one. Um, but the issue is like anyone can have an idea, but actually executing. Hundred percent. That's the hard part, and that's another thing that feels like I don't know if it's like movies or entertainment, but like people feel like the idea is all they need. Yes. Without any realization of like, well, the idea is good and all, but like, everyone has you, a good idea. Yeah, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Making it happen. That's the secret sauce. That's what sets you apart. Yeah. Do you, it, it, from from a, you know, a, a really zoomed out view, it doesn't seem like you've had a problem doing that. No. Um, we've had a few projects that just haven't quite gone the way we hoped mm -hmm. or like to much lesser scale than like Mr. Beast, like canceling a half million dollar video or something sure. like that. Um, but either like we still learn something from it mm -hmm. and we might end up using part of that project in another project down the road. Yeah. Um, but that's something like our fans really appreciate in the early days. We still try and show it in today's videos. It's just like we show when we like hit like a roadblock. Yeah. Because it's just like. No, it, it not, nothing ever works according to plan. Right. And with YouTube, with you being able to cherry pick what you show to the audience, it's very easy to make it feel like that. Yep. And I think you lose a lot of that relatability and authenticity if you do just like snap your fingers and you're good right. to go. It's like, no, this was actually really hard to do. Like we hit this, we did that. Like yep. the Mr. Beast lightsaber video. Mm-hmm. We could have just done a video of like, we made Mr. Beast do lightsabers and we show how we made the lightsabers. But what ended up happening is when we went to film with him, me and my business partner were uh, kind of goofing around before the shoot. Okay. And we almost ruined his video. I, I watched this one. Yeah. Okay, I watched this one. So like, is this why Yuri told me not, not to let you guys in the showroom with your one wheels? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah. So um, filming was at a uh, ice rink. Yep. And I haven't been in an ice rink in a decade sure. so naturally we're like how far can we slide yep. and we're like sliding around and okay. whatnot. Um, and they had this big red carpet laid out yep. and they had the two safes in place right and they were going to cut through the safes with the lightsaber yep. right okay. so then what happened was um, me and Ian started like we started like doing little little races here and there yep. and then I was just like I had the genius idea I'm like okay let's both start on the carpet so we got like but a, this is where the safes were yeah so literally, it's just like three, two, one. We push off the carpet, get onto the ice, and as we're sliding away, we hear the safe, just one of them, fall oh. and completely shatter the door. <laughs> and you know, like the timeline that this video is on. Literally, like I think we had an hour before Mr. Beast was supposed to show up. The production crew looked like they were gonna murder us. They were like. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, it was hilarious. Our, uh, so we, we didn't actually get any footage immediately after because our camera guy kind of felt involved because he was filming us racing because of right. course he would. Yeah. So it was funny. He, he hit behind the Zamboni no for way. like five <laughs> minutes and he's just like freaking out. To not though, get in trouble. To not get in trouble, <laughs> even though it was like, it was obviously us. Yeah. And like the funny thing was it was me and my business partner and even like Bogdan. Um, he was just like at the side and he saw the whole thing happen. He's just like, like, oh my God. But we, we MacGyvered the shit out of the situation. We yeah. collected all the gallium. We got like a snack bowl from the kitchen. We used the lightsaber to melt the metal back down. We took it into the garage out back. We re we put the gallium back into the crack to reform the door. Yep. And then while we're doing that, the guy's like, um, when we made this door, it took like three hours for the gallium to like, solidify so the gallium was was what made it easier to cut out yeah. the safe so the lightsaber okay. can go through a steel safe right but it takes way too long and for mr beast cons right. being concise is key yeah so they actually came up with this idea it's just like oh well if we like if you go along the dotted line it'll cut a lot faster because gallium sure. melts really easy 
But gallium also gets really brittle, which is why all the problems happen. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, we, we had this, this idea. We had, like, what else do we have? Well, we got propane. Okay. What happens when you open up a propane tank? She gets cold. She gets cold. Yeah. So we were literally pouring liquid propane onto the gallium. Yeah. And we were able to freeze it in a matter of minutes. Nice. Thanks, Mitch. That's good. <laughs> I love that. I yeah. love that. And because of the way we, we put the video, like I put the rest of the video together after we got back and I started the narrative of like Mr. Beast asked us to make this in this short timeline, which was true. Yeah. And kept the excitement up through the video. And mm-hmm. then we show Mr. Beast the lightsaber. This is all cool. And then it's just like, all right, showtime. Disaster. Right. And people love that. Like having that like, yep. you know, and it's funny because like once we solved it, like one of Mr. Beast's producers is like, well, you got a hell of a good video out of this. And we're like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, we do. Yeah. And yeah, 10 million views. That's great. <laughs> when I watched that, that reminded me, I'm like, dude, you guys would make an awesome race team. Like the number, yeah. the number no, of I, things. I, I used to do hackathons and whatnot. Okay. And like, I love doing that. And I feel like we've done a few videos where we do like kind of build challenges. Yeah. Um, sometimes they're a bit staged just because they it have to be. Is, yeah. But the reality is like, no, this would actually be like, we should figure out how to do this more because it's just like it really does like you guys are a, show off your problem yeah. solving and then that, that's where that's where I shine that's where a lot yeah. of my team shines is like quick solving of problems mm-hmm. and really being able to like make it work yeah <laughs> yeah like the number of times you crash a car in practice and it's like all right you have an hour before qualifying <laughs> and it's like yeah you guys yeah. you guys have a yeah, perfect skill backup. set for it yeah yeah no i thought of that you guys are going to be great go karters <laughs> <laughs> That's the hope. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of pros in the league because it's the cheapest way to race. Yeah, there's a bunch of old guys uh, who are just like, yeah. well, it looks like I'm not getting first ever. <laughs> no, you'll be fine. We'll do a little coaching. We'll do a little coaching. Awesome. I finished that track. I finished second at the Canadian Nationals one year there. Nice. Yeah, yeah. That's so awesome. I know the track. I know the track. <laughs> well, I just got a race box, so I'll be able to evaluate my lap times and whatnot. What's a race box? Oh, you haven't heard of a race box? No. Uh, Is it telemetry for your body? Yeah. Oh, okay. Like, That's awesome. Um, I think one meter accuracy GPS. Perfect. Like phones are not very accurate. No, like, no, yeah. Super hit and miss. Yep. But yeah, um, and it'll show you like your because it's also got your uh, your G forces in it too. Yep. So you can see, you can actually see your braking, you can see your acceleration, you can see how you're making the corners and whatnot yep. if you're hitting the race line and whatnot. So, Perfect. Uh, so you can overlay every lap. Yeah. Yep. And uh, apparently, I haven't tried it. I only just got mine, but it's also got like audio relayed to you nice. so if you set it up right you can actually get a bit of feedback as you're racing like uh you did that sector faster than last time and whatnot oh that's perfect yeah that's perfect i don't know how much it will actually help in practicality but it's like it's cool it, it will and even just like being able to like finish the racing session and be like all right what was my fastest time and see like yeah okay I did improve a bit. Right, because the rental carts don't have any telemetry. They don't have anything. Okay, yeah, you they need that. Nothing. You need it. Yeah, you need <laughs> I it. I don't even have a speedometer. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I know race cars really have speedometers, but <laughs> yeah, you need to know your lap time. You yeah. have to, otherwise you don't know if it was good or not. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, you're yeah. going to love it. You, you'll, you guys will get hooked. <laughs> yeah. So, actually, funny, we, we, we kind of made a bit of a race uniform, too. So, yeah. we got these uh, black shop coats that we sell on our store, and they're, like, fire-resistant, and they're these nice, like almost like a black like denim kind of thing. Yep. A big Hacksmith logo on the back. I ordered iron on names. So we've got our names Perfect. across the back. Yeah. And then I, I went and I made a whole bunch of like patches and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So I got enough patches to cover like both arms to look like we're sponsored. But the funny <laughs> thing is it's just all of our different brands. So like Hacksmith.store, Engineered, uh, the Hacksmith Racing League, That's um, great. Hacksmith Industries. Yeah. Like Herc. Yeah. Uh, all of it. And it's just like. <laughs> it's all you. It's just, it, it's silly and like. It's funny, too, because it's not a proper race suit. Right. So we're not... I don't think we seem legal. like the douchebags who, like, show up, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, it's no, just no. Like, I think people it, We look it. like the mad scientists, kind of, because, like, they're literally, like, black lab coats, basically. Yeah. And they work quite well, and you just wear regular pants underneath, like, you're, you're good to go. No, that's good. So it's just, like, it's, it's funny, but, oh. like... Yeah. <laughs> right on. Man, well, we should probably shut her down. I really appreciate you coming out. Yeah, no, this, this was, was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to do it again, and I'm... Oh, man, I can't wait to be driving down the 401 and see the Rubik's Cube and the hammer. Rubik's Cube, actually, um, we want to finish the hammer within the month for Thor Love and Thunder when that comes out. Okay. So that should be done sooner than later. Oh, I didn't even tell you the best part of that. Besides dropping it on things, yep. we want to do it kind of like just for laugh gags. Okay. Leave it places. 
right get people's reaction yes so we're actually going to put a 360 camera dvr system in it nice and nice maybe get permission from a bunch of the places sure but the public walking by those places won't know we have permission they're just like what the heck it's like i want to leave it in a park overnight like all kinds of stuff we're gonna like leave it in one of our employees driveways and yep. then catch his reaction when he tries to get to work and like his car is blocked in perfect <laughs> meanwhile we have the forklift hidden around the corner or something it's yeah. like literally you need a forklift to move it that's right. the only way to move it and we designed it specifically to make sure our forklift can still move it <laughs> yeah because <laughs> otherwise we're screwed <laughs> but like and i think that's just like if you're recording for 24 hours, you're going to get some genuine reaction of just like, what is this? Like, Yeah. What? <laughs> oh, man, I can't. Where are you going to leave it? Just all around town. We'll yeah. see. Oh, that'll be good. <laughs> cool. Thanks, man. It was nice to meet you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was The Hacksmith. If you guys enjoyed the episode, share it with some friends. Give it a rating. That's the only way this thing grows. Uh, I'll see you guys next week. Peace.